in five minutes of throwing flags up, flags down. So your communication and your communication is limited to that. Once things get started, also that is within your own squadron. Each of you is a squadron commander. You're not commanding just a single ship. So within your own squadron, that is how much you can signal if you want complicated maneuvers. If you want, if you're just follow me, you don't have to signal. They'll just follow you, and you and you can work without signals on that. They'll follow you and fire on ships as they bear. If you want to send specific orders to a specific ship in your squadron or a specific or some detailed orders to the entire squadron, you'll need to make sure it fits within that line or send it over multiple turns so that's how that's how dispatches so to speak are going to work today because it's all by signal flag and you're over miles of ocean or kilometers of ocean all right um anybody have any preferences for whether they want to be the spanish or um perfidious Alba albion i i want to win one so I'd, I'd prefer like to, to be on the. On, what's that? Oh, oh, sorry. No, no problem. Uh, so I'd like to go red. All right, Marshall. Marshall, if you'll drop down to red. Okay. I would also like to rule the waves. Nice. I'd like All to right. see Marshall lose again, so I'll go yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll with red, Actually, man. no, I'll go red and I'll. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, you'll guarantee the victory. <laughs> you'll go red and sail back to Gibraltar. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So if my players that are definitely for one side or the other will drop down, um, yellow is going to be blue in the in Discord. If my players who are definitely one. All right, hello everybody to today's uh, Open Saturday Kriegspiel stream here at the International Kriegspiel Society. We are running a, or I'm playing today, um, Dan Tech is running a naval Kriegspiel, Age of Sail, Napoleonic, early Napoleonic. It's like it's based on the 1797 battle at Cape St. Vincent. So we'll see British on Spanish and I've signed up for the Spanish team let's see what the the team has to say not much so far all right we're just assembling players and uh, so usually um, what the umpires will use are these blocks they are designed by Damon again so they have uh, scripted ammunition tracks and crew and hull whatever here oh, there's no ammunition in fact it's crew hull damage and sails can reduce those and they can spawn stuff smoke on the hull and <laughs> skirmishes <laughs> skirmishes uh, so that's the same the same uh, script he used there for the land units of course and you can set the the name of the ship there i've just ported over from the black uh, seas module which is very awesome a few ship models and shrink them down to approximately fit the blocks and what is so nice about them they can actually fire broadsides and they can be set on fire <laughs> so that's a very lovely feature i think Let's see if we can make use of that during the game i'm i'm pretty much looking forward to this and Tech just explained to us that um, today we will only be able to message via flag signal. So obviously we can't really write dispatches, but we are sort of limited to um, what one can write in the title of a note card. This is a message by flag signal so let's see is this yeah so that this was would fit and that's actually also within the squadron so each player will command a squadron of ships and if you want to give orders within the squadron you already have to use the flag so very limited 
otherwise you'll have to to signal it over various turns right so we are waiting for the setup of things wait for the briefing before we can actually start debating our plans and based on the fact that we can only communicate by flag signal we should discuss a solid plan with contingency plan so how do we react to a given situation uh, beforehand because otherwise it's, it will be hard to coordinate an, a new plan right and everybody would just go in sort of blind and react spontaneously to what is going on of course the wind will will play a big role here we have the compass rose from north is, is up on the on this map although i think it should be a bit shifted to the left anyways that's how the umpires roll and the weather gauge or gauge however you want to pronounce that uh, which is um, important to stay closer to the wind and uh, if you want to turn the ship of course age of sail ships you don't want to get in irons which means the wind frontally so that the ship just stops in the dead um if you want to if you turn like tack through this through this in irons sector like into the wind there is a risk to get stuck of course and all these things um yeah don't don't want to go too much into detail like how <laughs> how uh sailing a tall ship really works but i think you have a basic idea of that all right really looking forward to this i can already see that i have amentis and my team morty who is a relatively new player and nick that's nice all right who's going to be your commanding officer That's a good question. All right, so I'm going to shoot you a. I'm going to shoot a, two screenshots into blue one. Uh, yeah, I don't know who who want to be the overall commander. What about you, Nick? I know nothing about uh, ships, so. <laughs> <laughs> You know I am Swiss, so there is no scene in my, in my country. <laughs> Come on, the, look, the Swiss Navy is undefeated and untied. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I meant it's decent right. aus dem so, um, I'm gonna hop there's enough of y'all that are that are um admins that you can see this stuff anyway. I'm gonna drop a screenshot into boy one that shows an overall of where you're at on the map since most of this map is ocean. So now you can see where you're at in reference to Cape St. Vincent. Uh, and then I'm going to drop you a tight, a tight screenshot of all of your ships. And these are, they're in four different formations. Those are your four different formations. Okay. You have Vanguard, the Battle Line Squadron 1, Battle Line Squadron 2, and your Rear Guard. And you should be able to... And I'm going to go grab your... Briefing. And the and they're all noted in your briefing as well. Um, do you want to set up the player channels, or should I? If if y'all decide what I. What I would like is the overall fleet commander to be blue one, and then after that, because the overall, 
let's see, the overall fleet commander will, because each, even if you're the fleet commander or not, you're going to be commanding the squadron. So the overall fleet commander will be commanding the second squadron. So let's do Vanguard. Let's do it in, in order on the Blue 1 channel. Vanguard, Blue 1, uh, Battle Line 1st Squadron, Blue 2, 2nd Squadron, Blue 3, Rear Guard, Blue 4. And that way it'll be in order. Uh, it'll be easy for the umpires. But the overall commander, whoever the overall commander is, they are commanding from the Santissima Trinidad, which is the largest ship afloat, basically, at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, Jan, if you can just set those up for your own side. Yeah, sure, that'll, we do. That'll speed it up. Yep. Appreciate it. All right, Nick, so you're up for the challenge of com being commander? Okay, guys. <laughs> I mean, I think we we all don't really know what uh, I mean that much. I know a little bit about sailing and stuff, but... Yeah, so who is who? <laughs> who is, um... So I put you then in the vanguard, I think. So I will be the vanguard. You have access anyways, right? Yeah, because you're a moderator. Oh, but the one guard is, is huge. No, it's, uh, that's... Oh yeah, actually it has quite some ships. Yeah, you're right. So uh, where's the um, briefing posted? It's only in the in the Vanguard in the blue one, so Nick and I can can see that right now and talk about it. Okay. okay. But thought of, I'm, I was missing something. Yeah, I can just just copy that over in a second. So let's see. Or maybe maybe where is the Santissima? That was the one that you referred to. So that second squadron. So Nick is then. Blue three, actually. Let me change that. Blue three. Let's oh. Nick. Okay, so I am second squadron. That's me. Yes. Okay. So Amenthes and Morty, do you have any uh, preference? Do you want to have like ships of the line or smaller oh. ships? I would prefer so a small ship and a smaller ship. Smaller ships, there we go. So, do you want to be in the front or the rear then? Front. All right. Yes. So, that's Morty for blue one. Morty, you are the vanguard, right? In theory, yes. So, then Amentus. Uh, Line or rear? First squadron or rear? Um, I don't care. I'm indifferent. Mm. I'll give you the line then. Okay. So there's excess and I need to myself here unmute the channel and copy you the briefing is this all one message and so Jan you will be the rear okay yeah yep so the rear is in the truck All right, and here are the pictures of the squadrons and our initial position. that on the second screen and set up the 
units. Where is Cadix? Where is Cadiz? So that should be... Uh, which one is that actually? Uh, wait. Google is my friend. Cadiz. This the... I don't know, the central one? I think so. Isn't the yellow char circle the where we de deploy? And so we got to show an image. Yeah, I think we can three. deploy within this yellow circle there. Okay, no. Oh, okay. maybe I will share my screen. I think we can do it. Yeah. Uh, no. In the preparation phase. Yeah, absolutely. No, oh, it's a shame that they haven't set up these squadrons in before. Oh, shit, I am sharing the wrong one. Um... Okay, for me, Cadix is this one. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, for, for, I think this is Cadiz. Okay. And uh, so, based on the input from the Empire, we are. Uh, okay. We oh, yeah. are. Okay. okay. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> so the goal. Uh, have you read the um, the? Um, the goal of the of the game, all of you. Did you see it? So the goal is to reach Cadiz and um, to avoid as much as possible the English fleet, who is uh, far more experienced than us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, well, I, I mean, it's really guessing but i suppose they will either come from the east from uh, gibraltar or i don't know is it possible that they come from the north maybe so maybe they are in a blockading position already maybe yeah Uh, so we need maybe to send uh, a small squadron in front of us. Now I'm just quickly pulling together all the counters needed. The four ships is this battle line one, right? No.
So what I think the wind might be a challenge because if I understand correctly, it's like blowing from the direction of Cadiz, sort of. Uh, like from the I north. don't know if the current weather gauge is uh, correct, but I think it means it's blowing from the southwest, which is good for us because it's coming from behind. Isn't isn't that working the other way around? Like <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I think the, the weather gauge is if you're closer to the wind, so to say, because then you can like dictate the enemy where to sails. Uh, that's a good question for the empire. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I for me, it's think... it means from where, well where the wind is blowing, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, do we have an empire here now? Uh, Merlin, are you playing with us or are you Empire? I'm playing with you. Oh, do, but you you get no no command. I can split off my 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 ships if he, you want. I have a, around like eight ships. I can split off between me and, and Merlin. For each, if you, yes, there are eight. Yeah. Yeah, right. I okay. also have in the rear got two first, like first rate ships of the line. So if we put the first rates together to form a third uh, line squadron, battle line squadron. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Marlin, you got uh, the. I can I name the name of the ship so you know. The Purisma Compassion, the biggest ship. Yeah, wait. I'm, I'm going to set him. Uh, Set him up like uh, give him a channel so then. Okay, give him the biggest ship so he can be at least at least he can fight and I just go in uh, at the start of the game. Then we yeah. have. A bit. I'm just switching the channel then. So you are splitting. We are splitting into your command, Morte. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you yeah, will get right. uh, one more ship, one one more small ship. Okay, so I will screen in at the start, since I have the lightest ship here, I think. Yes, I have the lightest ship. Kind of. Yes, kind of. Alright, man, you should have access to blue 4 now, and I should name that line 3. Line 3, Merlin. And there's the... Oh. Briefing the complete briefing in there, but we will give you some ships now. Thank you. Uh, so, can I ask? Yep. Can I ask what what ship we will be given to Marin and what I keep? So at least I know what what to make, what I have. I would uh, say I would say or well, suggest that we give our heavy ships. So that's the first class ships we got. You got one, yeah. and I have two of them. Then we have okay. three for the battle line squadron, and maybe um, I give another fifth rate. What do you think, Nick? Uh, I am lost because we wanted to split the command of Morte. Yeah. And you want now, you, Jan, you want to give you some of your ships or? No, yeah, I mean... Um, but... Wait, go, go, Jan, go, Jan, sorry. I mean, the, the question is, I, do you want to form two Vanguard squadrons then or? What is the approach? Did I, miss well, I would like to have one. The general idea is to have one one vanguard squadron moving more or less right in direction of Cadiz, mm -hmm. and we are following uh, a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. And well, then uh, 
high, depending on, well, maybe we can have two uh, small, uh, two, uh, van, uh, two uh, scouting squadron, one in direction of Cadix mm -hmm. and one on our uh, right. Sorry, I don't remember what's the name in uh, in Navy. I think it's uh, starboard, if I remember well. Uh, meaning another one like this. So the one going to Cadiz should scoot if the enemy is somewhere here. And the one on our right should protect us or warn us from anything coming from uh, Gibraltar. All right, Nick, uh, one thing real quick. Uh, we have ready, and I'm going to split off, uh, probably, let's see, probably the Vanguard. Yeah, and Merlin uh, as well, so we've gotten two more players. Oh, yeah, I've gotten two more players. Okay, so you got Merlin and ready that are in addition, well, yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you have six players. Okay, so the... Vanguard squadron will split that. Y'all figure out what ships of the Vanguard will go with who. Mm -hmm. And the rear guard squadron split that as well. Oh. Alright. Okay. Y'all split that off and tell me what ships are being assigned to uh, who so that I can move them on the table when we get started. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give y'all time to work through your briefing. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, let's try to have, um, well, well I, I don't know because I am from a, <laughs> from a commander in chief perspective, I would like to have small, well, I mean, very fast and agile squadron going forward, mm -hmm. yeah. but it means the, this player will have you know, we won't have uh, heavy ships, heavy uh, mm -hmm. first place class mm -hmm. ships. So maybe it's less interesting from a player perspective. I don't know. So I don't want to to remove um, well the player from from the player. So um, I am a little bit. Uh... I don't mind. I don't mind having only light ships. Though. I mean, okay. A, for me, the same. Okay, so um, so we will have one uh, one vanguard or scouting squadron with light ships, maybe uh, let's say four, and one two. Okay, let's three or three. Maybe we can put uh, some um, frigate. So, how many Gentlemen, players? I don't have a map yet. Um, it's uh, it's in the in the general channel. The no, uh, yeah, I don't use a uh, tabletop. I don't. Oh, uh... I see. Um... Oh, can, can you see my screen at the moment? I am streaming my screen. Well, yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, then I will provide you with the map. I will give you a. Uh... A link on the map. Yeah, please uh, give it a good uh, a map with good resolution, please. Last time I got a map, it was very messy. It was like one one twenty p or uh, one one forty four p. Yeah, well, that's just what we got here. That's the problem. Yeah, I just send you the link on the map. Yeah, that. Try to download good. it, maybe. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. I got it. So, okay, let's say we have one uh, scouting squadron. The idea is they move in direction of uh, Cadiz. Is it you, Jan? Is it okay for you? Should I take that command? Yeah, sure, why not? If you agree. And uh, the other one was, uh, I don't remember, was it you, Morte, who wanted to uh, who agree to have a... Um, yes. A yeah, and uh, I got the... If, I don't know if all, all of you got about, we got the wind uh, 
the way, the way they're going right now. Ooh, it's okay. going in north, uh, north east. east. Are under the eastern fear. Yeah, let me check again. Yes, can we really see which ships you know took into the squadrons? Um, so you mix so, it all up completely, right? To get yeah, rid of the sorry. first squadron. Yeah, yeah, no, it's no problem. I'm just trying to figure it out. So now we have four other, and okay, let's try to do something. So my proposal, I take uh, one, well, I have to take my uh, ships, my uh, capital ship, yeah. and uh, I will take three frigates with me, mm -hmm. then another group has two first class ship mm -hmm. and three second uh, class uh, ships. Uh, let's say uh, Armentus, is it fine for you? Yeah, I okay. am indifferent. Give me whatever you feel right to. Then we have Merlin. And last but not least, we have Prahar. So I got three as well, and then there is a. Four frigates, right? Yeah. Okay, then I will quickly adjust the channel. So, Morty remains in the van, van group one. I become channel two. Oh, come on. Move that one up. Then we got a first quarter of the line was a Mentus, then, or who was that? No, Nick. So that would be three line one Nick. Jan, Jan, can you please rename me as Reddy, Mr. Reddy or Reddy? Yeah, give me a second. Uh, Nick, sorry if I left, but uh, did you did you say the, what uh, was what were my uh, my ship? Or are you the, are you done? Already? Yes, your ships will be. Uh, you are. Sorry, I missed somebody. <laughs> uh, Nick in the truck at Yeah, Morty got. Ah, yes, you are. You are. You are part of the scouting squadron. So you will yes. have one um, second class uh, ship and one third class. Let me show you. I just put your name. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay, no, okay, perfect. Yes, I, oh, yeah, okay, I can no. do a screenshot. No, I am Jan, please rename me as Mr. Reddy. That Prahar is uncomfortable for me, please. Okay, we'll change. I think Reddy is comfortable for everyone. Yep, that should work. 
Okay, I mean, I'm, we don't know. I mean, the ship names are now an issue, probably, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, we should know. Maybe I think we, they, we need to know the name of the ship so we can. Otherwise, I, th I think the on part will be. Uh -huh. Otherwise, the Empire will be more difficult for them to control them, I think. I mean, that's sort of their, their problem, but yeah, you're right. Because, I mean, if you want to give, like... R-E-D-D-Y. 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 Thank you, Jan. That's very good. Um, okay. So Nick, which squadron? Um, Jan squadron will go to Cadiz, and I go to to the st to the straight. To uh, yeah, the idea is you, Morte, you you will screen the well the right of our flank, meaning if. Uh, the English are coming from um, from Gibraltar. Gibraltar is here. If they are coming from here, I want you to warn us that the enemy is coming from uh, from the east. Okay. Uh, Jan will move forward in direction of Cadiz to tell us if there is uh, any in enemy. Uh, in front, between us and uh, Cadiz. Cadiz is, uh, is here. And uh, we will uh, move behind. Uh... Um, I got a question. Yeah. What if we met them before uh, we are near, we are, if we are in the middle of the ocean? What do we do in that case? Because I don't think they will remain near the, the objective. They probably want us to meet them at the middle. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, even if we want to close in on Cadiz, we need to figure out the wind thing now. If if the wind is from the coming from the south or north. Yeah, I will. Tr let's try to ping one of the empire. Because if it is, then multi or both of us possibly want to say closer to the wind to get a bit more speed uh, so it would be initially we would sort of going to the heading for the east, uh, east Jan, in theory, Jan in theory you have the perfect wind since it's uh, towards uh, northeast I get uh, I since I go to the east I will get I will get not the best but I can still go so I think it's, if it doesn't change uh, during the battle we are uh, pretty much uh, in a good position. Yeah. Wait, I'm just calling the Empire, huh? so we know about these wind uh, things. Yes. Darkwalker, hello. Yeah, these are tall ships, ship of the line, frigates, third rates, all you need. Um, problem is we are sorting it out because um, differing from the initial briefing, we have more players now, and now we need to sort them into new commands and shuffle all the ships around and I guess the umpires will be a bit annoyed but that is because they haven't prepared 
the module properly, I would say. Hey, Tech. Hey, Dan. Hey, sorry. Sorry, I'm try trying to teach the umpires. <laughs> Tech, can you see my screen? I am streaming. Uh, yeah, give me, just, give me just a sec. Yep, I see your okay. screen. So this is um, weather uh, gauge. And yeah. the question is, we have is, it means where Sorry. the wind is blowing, meaning that if my ship is like this, I have the wind in my back. Yep. Yep. And if my ship is like this, I have the wind in front, which Correct. is bad. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So general general rule of what you would know as a as an admiral of the period is if you're if you're going completely with the wind you're not quite going at your top speed no mm -hmm. if you are going slightly off so by the points of the compass if you're going like two points off of yeah like that you're going like two points off of directly with the wind all your sails are filled with air they're not competing with each other they're not taking air away from each other and you're able to go at your maximum speed. If you're going directly with the wind, you'll go slightly slower because your mizzen mast in the back is going to be taking wind out of your mainsails. Because okay. it's not going to let wind get to them. If you are, if you are, there's two ways to do like a full turn. Like if you're turning into the wind all the way, you need to turn what across the wind. You need to go from going west to south if you need to go from going west to south you're going to go across the wind there at southwest so you have two options you can either what they call wear and do what they call wearing in which case you would do a full circle around west to north to east to south and you have no worries about running into the wind you have no worries about losing wind if you were to just go take the short route from west to south in your bearing then you have the possibility what they call going into irons which means your ship catches the wind as it comes across the wind it catches the wind in the front and it just causes the, it basically causes the ship to just shudder to a complete stop the wind smacks you in the face. The wind smacks your ship in the face, and co and you come to a complete stop. It's not mm -hmm. a guarantee. Ships obviously did it all the time, but it, it's one of those. If things don't go, if things go wrong, then your ship comes to a complete stop. It there there are odds for that. Uh, as far as as far as everything else with the wind, that's pretty much it for the for the weather gauge. You can make that weather gauge a little bit smaller, and it'll fit down inside the the center of the compass and that'll show and because the 16 basically if you go within one point of the wind those little tiny points not the big ones if you go within one point of the wind of directly into the wind you have the possibility of going into irons okay yep yep so the wind is coming out of the southwest so you're, the wind is actually blowing kind of towards Cadiz just about from where you're at. So you currently have pretty good wind. And do we know at which speed the wind is changing? I mean, can we expect this, the wind to stay like it is for some time? Yeah, the storm that blew you out to sea is gone, so you can expect the wind to be relatively normal at the moment. Okay. Um, you know, the Royal Navy, hat. You, slipped pa you were trying to slip past Gibraltar, a few days ago, and a and a strong wind out of the west, out of the east, came and swept you way out further to sea than you thought you were going. You you got past the Royal Navy there at Gibraltar, but you without contact at all. But then you wound up swept way out to sea by the time you by the time you started clawing your way back. Um, and keep him keep in mind. Your ships can only fire on the broadside. We're not counting balance stern chaser shots. They're so minor, they're basically irrelevant. So you're looking at you're looking at within angles of the broadside. So out to so 
think of a kind of a shallow angle off of each corner, and that's your broadside. And you, you're if a ship's too far ahead of you, too far behind you, you're not going to be able to hit them. Um, What's the instance, firing distance? In the... Firing distance, your maximum range is 24 grids. 24? <laughs> yeah, yeah, range... <laughs> Of course, your odds of hitting anything at 24 grids is pretty yeah. garbage, but you, you could. But I you could get signaling, signaling is 14 grids, right? Yep, signaling is 14 grids. That's where you can actually read read um, read different stuff. And if you guys want to internally come up with a code for you know some basic things, and then you just send a signal of 5, and that means something to you guys, then... That can mean something to you guys. So, uh, have you figured out what split you're going to have on your on your? Um, also, you need to go further north. Where when I sent you the screenshot, it had a yellow circle. Mm -hmm. You've got to be inside that yellow circle for your initial deployment. That's where you're entering the map. So, you, if you took this whole formation a bit to the north, it would be within it would be within your deployment zone. Yeah, somewhere about there. That be that would that would be close enough for government work. Okay, and one question again for the constraint regarding the length of the signal. It was eight words or the eight. length. Yeah, eight, well, I re somebody remind somebody told me something I didn't know, which was that those those note cards scale. So if you if you type twenty words, it'll just make the words smaller and smaller. <laughs> yes. And I didn't real I didn't realize that at first. Mm -hmm. So so I figured out how many words before it starts scaling is about eight words, and then it starts scaling. So eight words is the maximum you could send as a free text if you wanted to come up with some signals between your different between your different commanders. Uh, we will fa if you send a one word or a one letter or a one number signal. We will faithfully send that number. We won't know what the heck it means. So you better hope the person on the other end knows what it means. Yeah, we should come up with some. All right. Um, have you figured out your split for Merlin and Reddy on what they're? Yeah, we put a screenshot in each uh, channel. Okay. Except except for blue four because I cannot access it. So. Oh yeah, let's let's just um, let's just go to blue seven because blue four seems to have vanished. It's like there there's always a, that one channel that disappears on us. Let me let me check that real quick. Where that is. Yeah, because I can't see it either, and I'm a mod, so I think blue oh, yeah, four is vanished. Mods are not allowed. Let me see why why not. Some. Somebody that was an admin probably ran a game and accidentally. Yeah. So now it should be it. should be there for you. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But hang on, let me minimize and bring it back. Nope. Yeah, it's not. If you just want to move them to blue, move somebody to blue seven. We'll just go with seven. But that's how we'll we'll organize it. And I'm gonna hop back into the. Okay, so then I meant to say I put you in uh, blue seven until we figure that out, or for this game at least. So line two. Mentis. <clears throat> okay. And give you access. There you go. Yeah. All right. So we are scouting ahead. What? Um, which sort of formation is the remainder of the? Nick, re real quick, because I didn't give, I didn't make separate modules for everybody, so I don't have the names of your ship. If you'll look on your names list and tell me what named ships these are for, like, Morte, where you split them off. Uh, we don't know. Most problem is I don't know which, 
well, which name is related to which kind of ships? Okay, it's... Well, I put it's... in each channel which kind of ships we want for each player. Okay, so in the Vanguard, if it's got a first beside it, that means it's a first rate. If it's got a fifth beside it, that means it, a first rate has got the three dots. And when it says fifth rate, that's a frigate, and then it's got the one dot. Everything else is a two dot ship. Yeah, yeah, based on that, we split up all the ships, so, but yeah. we can't tell the names. Uh, okay. So that's, because not every ship has a rating in the briefing. Yeah, the ships without ratings are all, um, the ships without ratings are all um, third rates. Sorry. All right. Uh... All right, well, we'll get this straight. This is the first. This is our first outing on this stuff, so it's gonna take a minute. I knew the. I knew it was gonna take. It, it was gonna take a hot minute to get this right. No. Yeah. All right. Probably have helped if the if you've had uh, a module for each team with the pieces named. Already. Yeah. Yeah, I should have thought about that last night. I kind of had uh, something else that came no, up. No worries. We figured out. All right. You split the entire fleet up yeah, yeah. differently, or no, completely. Okay. All right. Yeah, as I said, we got some organizing here to do for now. Uh, already almost an hour in. I hope it's not too boring for you to watch, but eventually we will get this going. I see Koons is watching and Stefan is there. And some other folks. Amanth is also still in the chat, but anyways. Once the game starts, I believe he will quit it. So while you're doing this, uh, we can maybe talk a little bit strategy here. Um, so we we got the plan for the two Vanguard squadrons. Um, how do you want yeah. to set up the, the rest of the squadrons? Oh, I was thinking to have... Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> there is the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let's remove it. So I was thinking to have... Um... The, um, the other squadron on three column, you know, one more or less like this. So you Maybe will probably be in, you're in the, the center there? Yeah, I might be in the center, all right. And I can put here. Okay. So. Right. And then. I would be here. Yeah. At the top, we have um, Armenteus. I think we should give each player um, um, a label so that we can, when we write messages, we can shortcut that. Is it the yeah, number of words or number of letters? I don't know what is counting to the limit. I think he said eight words. Okay, then we do not need to shortcut the player names. <laughs> okay, so we got the three main squadrons there parallel, and then we have ready with the rear squadron behind. The question is now, I mean, that should be clear to everyone how we react or especially the the line squadrons how they react in the case of us making contact like to prevent everybody sailing like tangling up um nick, nick one thing real quick yes you, i am making sure i've got everything okay i've got all the view i named all the ships with their names
trying to make sure I've got okay that was it yeah I mean I don't know how um, how important the ship names are for you because um, yeah also for us it well, will be sort of a, a problem yeah when... well what we're no nah, it's not a big it's not a big deal for us once once I knew that you weren't going by the squadron setup that was there and these are going to be merlin yeah i mean e even order. if uh, even if we would have to like sort of name every piece here no nah, um, it's fine you'll get you'll get what your you'll see your you'll all see, get a screenshot with what ships are actually going to be yours by name because mm -hmm. they're all named in in my module yeah but, but i mean uh, if you give us the report you're seeing this and this ship on your right and I don't know to which squadron this ship belongs. This info is worthless yeah. for me. All so. right. So I'm going to give you a... I will do this for you real quick. I'm going to give you a screenshot of all of your ships in order of your channels from left to right. So Morton and Nick Merlin. Ready. All right, I'm going to give it to you, Nick. Well, I'll just drop it into everybody's channel. This is your fleet in order of player from left to right. So now everybody knows the names of everybody's ships. Nick, you're obviously on the Santissima Trinidad. Okay, maybe we can try to think to what will happen so one possibility is the English are here to the east so I think we should uh, try to delay them as much as possible with uh, one part of our, our force mm -hmm. screening them I would say maybe Ready and uh, Morte, who will be in the area. And okay. maybe Jan, Jan could also try to help them, while the, the other part of the, of the fleet is moving to Cadiz. Uh, now the big problem is if they are in between us and Cadiz, uh, wow, that's more difficult. Yeah, then we'll, I guess we'll have to get relatively close to the, to the coast and then yeah. sail along the coast because then we have the, the weather gauge. Um, yeah. So you would say something like this? Or actually, no, that's wrong. We would have the weather gauge if we are further away from the coast. So then, if we are sailing further away from the coast, they will have issues to get to reach us. But how can we use that to our advantage? If we move south, they have to move against the wind. Right, yeah. So... And if we move north, they will have the wind. Uh, yeah, they will have the wind in the good direction. So okay, <clears throat> so let's say we have two plans. Plan one is the enemy is coming from the east, and Redi, Morte, and Yan, you have to screen them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plan two. The enemy is between us and the uh, harbor of uh, Cadiz. Then we move to the south around 
around the enemy, hopefully. But we still need some screening. Yes. Here. Uh, I would say... Maybe Armenteus, Jan, and Morte, you would screen in this case? Well, I'm already on days, so that's okay. I'm already going in that, that position, so if yeah. I meet them, I already know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can. Meaning, I mean, if we are going to the south, I will more or less be in the middle. Ready will be here. Uh, Merlin will be behind me, and Armantius will be to the north. So we will, you would be in position to screen uh, us from the English, with the help of Morte and Yann. Um, we got a new, a new player in the VC. Sorry. Oh, no, no, he left again. No, he left again. <laughs> Okay, and uh, in, all right. So I agree on the on the plan. Sounds sounds good. And another question: If they're at if they're at the south and at Cadiz, what we in that case? We so, are in deep <laughs> shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I think they have a navy big enough to do, to do it. <laughs> so if it's the case, then we have to to try to move <laughs> to the north, which won't be good for us. <laughs> Because if we move north, uh, the wind is good for us, but it's also okay. good for them. Yeah, we probably have to deliver battle then and sort of turn turn to the southeast where the compass rose on the map is. Yeah. So that we can keep them in between the coast and, and the wind mm -hmm. and dictate like the battle. And then, yeah. and then yeah. what, we, what you need to decide is who gets in which position in the battle line then, so that you don't just crash into each other. Jump in the next, in a, in a naval battle. Um. Like if we then shift, then probably you know, Reddy would be in front, and you, Nick, then Amentus. Yeah, if we shift to the south east, Armentius will be like this. I will be in the middle. Yeah, I, I mean, just I mean, based based that we make contact and we need to fight rather than just evade them into the harbor. Um, yeah, we, uh, need, we need to think about which squadron is in which position. So I would say, um, but my all the na all the navy must go to the, to Cardiz and at a point we win, or only a part of it, like only the the admiral uh, the captain ship. No, we should conserve most of our forces and. Do not try to lose as many chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Miss yeah. Your goal right is to... ultimately to not have contact. Yeah, right. I mean, if really we are forced to to go into battle, I would propose... Okay, we have uh, Merlin at the back. Because, I mean, initially we are like this. So, the, the idea briefing... is... Sorry, the briefing even says we can, if the British block Cadiz and we don't want to fight them, we can evade. Uh, the Cape of St. Vincent is where probably to the west, that but thing there. Where is Cape of St. Vincent? I believe that's, that's the western edge there. The little peninsula. Let me check that real quick. Dan, what's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is not to fight, because our our men are much less experienced than the British. Ah, uh, yes, indeed, yeah. We the British, Experience. and after that, we can avoid the British if we want. We have to pass to the states of Gibraltar or, any, or reach any port like that. 
Yeah. So we ha we have to reach either Cadiz, which yes. is here, the red uh, uh, square, no. or Cape San Vincent, which is the blue square. Here. What? I mean, our first goal is to try to reach the red square here, Cadiz. Without but any contact. Avoiding any contact, yeah, yeah. But if we cannot, because there is a British between us and uh, Cadiz, it seems we could move to Cape Saint Vincent, which is the blue screen, uh, blue square. Sorry, here. That's what I. Okay, so then we probably need to agree on a signal that, like, Nick, you decide when we should pull out if, in case, like, we screen them and then we sort of try to get around them and yeah. you realize it's not going to work out and we we just need to sail west. Yeah, but sailing west means we have to be careful because... Because of the wind, huh? so... yes. We should uh, tell me if I'm wrong. If we have to move back to Cape Saint Vincent, which is here, um, if we do a turn uh, like this, that's fine. We will have the wind more or less with us. Mm -hmm. If we do something like this, that's a problem. To the south, yeah. that's a problem. So we should move to the north. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, especially for the heavier ships that going through yeah. the wind is, is a problem. So... So, let's say... Um, yeah, we need to... to find a communication... Um, I think it really depends on <clears throat> on the screening forces, right? If we mm, yeah yeah if we see uh, maybe... many British ships there, we just give a signal and you already turn around and we sort of try to screen your rear. Yeah. So if we say uh, if the message is um, uh, let's say uh, to Cadix, mm -hmm. it means. We are going straight to Cadix. There is nothing in between us and Cadix. Okay. If we stay uh, to Cape Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent, Vincent, it means we have enemy between us and Cadix, and uh, also to the southeast. So we are going back to the mm -hmm. to, to here, and if we say, uh, let's say, what could be the the code could be uh, to to southeast. It means there is nothing uh, here, and we are going to try to move around like this to Cadiz. Oh, wait, I, I didn't understand the first uh, code. Sorry, can you repeat? All right, so uh, let's remove. So if the, the code is to Cadiz, it means we are go there is nothing between us and Cadiz. So we can go straight to Cadiz, OK? following more or less this blue line. If uh, you receive the message to the southeast, it means the enemy is somewhere in between here, but there is nothing here. So we can try to move around like this. And if the message is to Cape Saint Vincent, it means the enemy is here and also here. 
So we have to do a turn to the north and move back to Cape St. Vincent. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> this map is really strange. <laughs> okay. You... Okay, well, you, you get the point. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> Morty, we too need to somewhat stick into range. I mean, we have the light ships to send one over quickly, but yeah, we, we need to okay. find out and then immediately send word back to Nick. And big, uh, Nick can then relay to the others. Oh. Okay. I don't know if the... Should we give the codes just like numbers or something? I don't know how... How universally understandable flag signals were for British and Spanish. Probably, I mean, they used the, probably the same basic system. Well, we, maybe we can send a number, and if you send a number, it means uh, it's the number of ship we encounter, or an arrangement right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe, so we, so we know if uh, someone needs to get some backup. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then considering the plans, maybe we can find some, some other code words. Are we sure that no, no British ship will try to cut our our line of retreat to St. Vincent? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think we can be sure. <laughs> because, can because, the be wind, sure. <laughs> because it can happen and I don't want to know it. Yeah. Yeah, not, I don't want to see it. Right. We'll see. <laughs> So let's let's just say uh, if we want to if we want to re uh, relay the two caddies message that's just we use just the word green okay I, I'm writing it ah, yeah. okay you, okay so. same same for me if we oh, want to go to this yeah is green yes okay to uh, Cape Saint Vincent Saint Vincent, Vincent is, uh, I don't know, red. Red, okay. And to southeast, meaning we are doing a turn around the enemy. It's uh, yellow. All right. Okay, I will copy it in your channel so yes. nobody will forget it. All Nick, right. I dropped I dropped a I dropped it into everybody's channel, so that yes. people will so that you can reference it. Um, your sailing orders: frigates get a plus one to their speed. If they're sailing in formation, they'll just stay in formation, but they can have a plus one to their speed. Um, no sail. Obviously, you're zero. You may drift a little, but that's it. Minimum sail, one fighting sail is two per turn, two grids per turn. And to explain that, that it, fighting sail means you've got your top sails up, but your main sails are not up. And it reduces your ability to take hits to your sails and rigging because there's less of it to shoot at. Then you have plain sail, and then you have full sail where you throw everything that you have out there. Um, so that gives you that gives you kind of your speed that you can expect in a five minute turn. How much would be full sail? Full sail for your ships of the line, it'll be four. Frigates could go five. Um, okay. And the way you make the way you make a turn is that you'll go forward, you'll go forward a square, and then you'll turn up to forty five degrees. Go forward a square, turn up to forty five degrees, etc. 
<laughs> so if you're making, if you want to make a 90 degree turn, you're going to go forward a square turn, forward a square turn. <laughs> okay. So that's that's about how big your your turning radius will be. Okay. All right. Let's get this rumbling. Yeah. After one hour and twenty minutes yeah. of planning, actually, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I think we have only now two hours of of uh, quick. Just one last thing. Mm -hmm. If really we have to fight the enemy, okay, because we are uh, forced to, to to meet them, I would propose that, you know, Armenteus, myself, and Ready, we form, let's say, a line of battle. And then Jan, Morte, and maybe Merlin, you can tr try to move around the enemy and mm -hmm. and shoot them from from yeah. the other side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe we can use the mobility of the light ships to get some yeah. radio shots out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the uh... British force is too great, and we do need to go towards Cape St. Vincent. Um, will anyone be left behind to stall the British fleet while the West retreat? I can do that. I can uh, I can try to cover our retreat. Mm -hmm. yeah. If Jan wants uh, to be with me, me I think, can. Yeah, I think it would be best to use the light ships to yeah. Yeah, yeah. just slow them. It's good to have some company to one time. All right, I'll be away from the keyboard for a second and then hopefully the game starts. Okay, so let me put down the names of my ships. This is third rate. All right, James, we'll hop back in the umpires and we'll start moving some turns. Uh, Nick. Uh, all right, if everybody will hop into your respective. Matilde, oops. Come on. Diana and finally we got the Atocha 
What is the NSD meaning? Is the Nuestra Señora de Antoja? So it's the Nuestra Señora de Antoja. De Antoja, nicht Antoja. All right. There we go. So uh, let me copy their names. Um, the first one was the San Pablo. And then we have the Matilde and the Diana. Matilde. And finally, we will be starting this game. <laughs> okay. I'm a bit, uh, <laughs> I must say, I'm a bit nervous about the game because we all don't really know that much about Age of Sail, little ships. I mean, okay, where the Goshen stuff, I get that, and, and I get like how you. Ooh, don't need to have the wind directly from the rear, so it's like slightly diagonal to the wind to get the most speed of it out of the ship and, and such, but um, <laughs> I got a feeling because we cannot really send dispatches and all that, that <laughs> we will just have see some big uh, carambolage on, on both sides, <laughs> but maybe that's just me. So let me grab the blue color for my cursor so that you can see where I'm pointing at <sighs> I don't even know if I can set the order of the formation I would probably put the frigates in front because they are quicker and the third raid, although, but how far would we want to send them ahead, you know, all on their own? So maybe one of them to go ahead, that would be, would probably be something. So, whoops, I need to remember that these pieces don't really react to other pieces in the way. So probably we want the Matilde to go ahead on her own speed. Just so that the crew can get an eye on possible enemy contacts and relay it back to us. That we can even quicker react and send signal to Morty, who has, or Morte, who has the command of the second vanguard squadron and to Nick, who is the overall commander, our admiral today. Admiral of the fleet. Mathilde, I mistyped that in the Discord, Mathilde. But the order would be to have the Matilde in front 
And then the Senora the Atoja is in the rear actually. Put it like this. Let me check back for the weather gauge. So we should be in a perfect angle to the wind. To sail close to the wind and get some speed up in the direction of Cadiz. I don't know where exactly I'll be positioned, but and <laughs> now the umpires wanna wanna tell me where exactly I'm, I'm, I am. But anyways, let's say I'm. We have the A for the Atlantic here to, to start with. Then we go, can go sort of straight to Cadiz. With a very good wind direction, if the wind doesn't change too much. I mean, that's another issue for us to, to ponder is if the wind changes dramatically. Of course, we haven't taken that into account during the planning. Leo, hello there. No, oh, there. There he, there he goes. Gone he is. <clears throat> and I'll probably be on the third right here. I mean, that's what what a squadron captain would do, right? Choose the biggest ship. So everybody can <laughs> detect the ship quickly, determine which one is the admiral ship, or in this case, the commander's ship. Or is uh, the, the squadron leader, is that a commander or a commodore already? I think a commander, right? Need to watch me some horn blower again, I think. <laughs> you old land lovers. Oh, I even have, maybe for, for later on, to celebrate the victory, I have some some rum here on the window board. That's uh, how thematic, right? Got some nice Cuban rum. Okay, I see umpires moving through the channels to take orders. That's good. Oda. So who's on the other team? Let's just take a look. That's Carter, Marshall, Chris, who I don't really know, Ninja Bushido, and Rudolph the Conqueror. A.K.A. Rudolf the Shrimp. Okay, so I don't know if they have any experience with naval combat and Kriegspiel. I think Marshall played in the World War I game recently. World War I naval, that is. But as it appears, um, everybody on our team is sort of green when it comes to naval stuff.
just checking if I got the order signals and the codes right. Green is no enemy in front of Cadiz. Then we got the yellow, which is to the southeast, which means there is nothing in the south but enemy in front of Cadiz. And then we got code red, which is Saint Vincent. We have enemies in front of Cadiz and in the south in significant numbers, not to be overcome by our unexperienced sailors. Yeah, the Black Seas module adds nice immersion. That's that's true. Um, I actually haven't played uh, Black Sea so far. I have, I have the rule books um, at hand. I bought them in physical copy, and I think I got the the main, the core rule book, even as a PDF. But those models, they are they are really nice animated, and I mean they have much more features in in the actual module which aren't here because they are scripted into the module or you can set like different sales states and i don't know a lot of things but being able to fire some broadsides <laughs> is pretty cool i must say pow 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 Oh, I don't even know how, how loud is this on stream. Let me see. Yeah, quite a bit. Hope everybody is awake now. Just get some broadsides out. And Otto is just organizing another Napoleonics game for tomorrow. Which I think I might want to attend. Um, we'll see though, because I'm planning to stream from 12 onwards. A sort of very cute, <laughs> cute Souls-like game. Which is called Tales of Iron, having rats and mouses. Oh, mice, sorry, rats and mice fight uh, frogs and and stuff. Um, if you can call a Souls-like game cute, but yeah, I think you get the idea. I really, really enjoy the graphics and, and stuff. I want to continue that. We started last week playing that. Um, so I probably will not stream another seven hours Tales of Iron tomorrow, but... Just a few, then have a break, get get some food, and maybe play some more Kriegspiel with Otto. Hmm. I love Otto's system. Did I already tell that? Very smooth. Like the combat resolution. Maybe the hits on the route thing uh, something to consider because i mean i get what they what they simulate in the game context but maybe they can convey a somewhat problematic uh, interpretation of the situation i don't know need to think about that a little bit so 
Morty gets signal yellow. Nothing to the south. So he's already there, right? <laughs> um. Morty is sending signal yellow. So, Amentus, if you're still in the stream, I think you should mute. <laughs> should mute the stream for now. Um, I don't even know. Peter Peter just told me that he will, he will be my umpire for today. And Arb sends me a signal yellow. So I have no clue where I actually am, which order my ships are in, where I'm sailing. I haven't given any orders to Peter. Um... I don't I don't know maybe the maybe the umpires are confused as well I don't know if I shop ping Peter to come and explain what's going on. So, I see that James and Arb are, are with their players again, <laughs> and I haven't, have still not gotten any reports, I still haven't given any orders. I'm a bit confused. So Peter is writing something, maybe he's giving me a report.
Okay, I think Peter will Peter will join me. Maybe. I just expressed my confusion about the signal and whether whether we started already or what what we have done so far. Confusing. Confusing. So I probably want to go plain sail for now. We didn't even we didn't even talk about that. In the planning, I mean. Okay, so there's the game announcement for tomorrow. School of the Empire I won't make and I don't have to because I know the system. I hope to play if if I make it tomorrow for this game, but we will see. Maybe I should put on some shanties in the background. But I fear I won't find some uh, under Creative Commons or free of license real quick. So better not, otherwise Twitch will strike me. Whoop did you do? Oh, I see. We are still sort of in information here. Um, like... Like maybe so... Then I guess more than will be just behind. All ships plain sail straight for Caddy. Are these eight words? One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. Yeah, well, there we go.
Well, probably need frigates get a plus one. And a third raid? Not. sale thingy on another screen or in another roll the window here so that I can refer to it quickly so that should be our starting position then like so Sort off with the wind to our rear. No, not not exactly. So that's good. I will even go a little bit harder on the wind, or closer to the wind. That's how you say it. And move directly east. Yeah, I mean. I can't really count now <laughs> on which on which square my ships are sitting, but yeah, doesn't matter, right? Until we are in contact, then it might. I just don't know why why Morty immediately said <laughs> said the yellow signal. Like we we yeah, we haven't even closed in really on the enemy or the objective. <laughs> Anyways, the this line of next ships is a little bit further north, and so is this one. They are about there maybe, and mine is a little bit further to the north. guess there something like that don't know why they are so far to the north Okay, I think <clears throat> Peter received my orders. Hmm, interesting. Let's hope this this game gets up now to speed we are in two hours already with planning of of, of uh, one hour 20 minutes so now we get we need to get going but i figured the umpires i mean this is all like experimental anyway so the umpires are trying to figure stuff out as well and that, that's all right but it's probably not uh, the best you can do on an open saturday game same with the naming of the pieces such 
stuff should should be prepared if you assume the player to know all the ship names and stuff you need to prepare such a module if you have that many ships you cannot assume the the players while they are sort of trying to come up with a plan like paste the names of the ships into all the pieces that's not for a pickup game like the open saturday game that's not optimal but anyways that's part of part of Kriegspiel and part of how we how we run it that will be mentioned in the debriefing discussion where not only players are criticized but also the umpires of course and everybody takes something away from the game after all Kriegspiel is a learning experience for everybody involved <clears throat> Definitely much more so than just a, a game in the classical sense. Okay, so Arp and James are with their players. Now I see Peter moving to Merlin. Interesting. Don't know if he wanna he wants to talk to me because I just just wrote down my initial orders. Yeah, and once we make contact, we probably want to change sails to fighting sails. From plane to fighting, because... So, plane sails is for frigates. Plane sails give them, gives a them movement speed of 3, depending on how you are <laughs> relative to the wind, of course. But in I ideal uh, uh, positioning that would be three and frigates get a plus one so they sail four squares and then the san pablo needs to go to full sail to keep up with them um once we make contact we want to change the fighting sail i would say to get a bit more mobile to maneuver more quickly i mean that's that's all what our lighter ships are about right being agile getting behind the enemy or in front of them trying to pull the enemy into irons and deliver some some beautiful raking shots on them so raking shots is like if you fire at the at the stern or the uh, rear of the ship and you are in a sort of a rectangular angle to the enemy ship and can fire onto it so that the cannonballs like move through the hull and yeah have devastating effect on on cannons and ship and and the crew sadly so that's very horrible thing with all the splintering splintering woods and stuff Would have been, uh, I mean, the, the map again is <laughs> at this, at this scale, at this, how, considering how, how big it is, how much it has been magnified at a very mushy, pixely quality. So maybe, maybe tech could have set up a just custom blue waves sort of matte and then model the coastline somewhat to some degree there are nice uh, tokens and, and and models for that on the steam workshop for sure but you need the time to prepare this these things of course <clears throat> Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. 
Okay, Peter's with Amentus right now. Any bets on, on how long it will take until we have the the first ships crashing into each other? <laughs> oh, I can't really see that coming already. Mm. Because I think, I mean... Players just need a completely different mindset when it comes to to maneuvering, ordering ships around. You need to think ahead quite a lot, and then you need to know what the other squadrons will do. So, <laughs> hmm. I don't know how chaotic that will be. So, two hours in, and there's Peter, hello. Yeah, no, I haven't spoken to you yet. Your, your uh, text was so detailed that I didn't see the need to talk to you at yeah, the time. Yeah, sure, but, no uh, problem. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I enacted your your orders uh, thus far. Uh, what, what little benefit can I give to you on that? Uh, Oh, you're just looking back and you can see uh, Nick's formation is moving a little bit to the northeast. So it currently looks like Nick and Armentus are going to come into contact with each other. So that's, oh. that's, just, a little, that's just a little greasy bonus for you. Yeah, I was, not speaking uh, to you before. I was already wondering oh, when we will have the first crash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll catch you later. Yeah, thank you, Peter. <laughs> that's great okay so what did i say we wanted to go to actually full save speed which would be four squares right uh one two three four and then the matilde will go ahead and sail uh, at full plus one that's five so did i move these four yeah so she will be i had one square and then apparently i don't know which speed they are sailing but it apparently nick is i don't know why but moving a little bit to the north so that's that's kind of funny and what's the weather gauge again let's grab this over here yeah Beautiful. I assume Morty is sort of turning around and moving in this direction. I don't know. Just, whoops. Okay, with such a big map, sometimes the tables get a bit wonky. So that's what I assume it's going on. I don't really know. Um, I'm sitting here on the... on the deck of my ship which is the san pablo and i see there is actually a blue table below the sea what is going on why aren't we using that so that's whoa, whoa. can i get a, a nice a nice view here ah no it's switching Let me get the weather gauge out of the way and then say we are sort of... Ah, it's hard to turn the, the camera to the to the right angle. This is what, what we can see right now. And we look back to see Reddy's column there. And we look back. Oh, that's, that's a nice, that's a nice view. If only the map wasn't just plain white, but... Look at that. Say it's all around. 
this is how we moved out. <laughs> Only to crash into each other <laughs> 30 minutes later. <laughs> okay, no, let's hope not. Can I actually, let me see, can I grab that screenshot re real quick? I got so many screenshots uh, in my tabletop simulator thingy here that, yeah. Alrighty, so let's see when uh, Peter returns. I don't, I don't actually know how how many turns we are into the game already. Maybe two, three. I saw the other umpires go down to their players two times, and then Peter arrived on the third, maybe. So next report should be like the fourth turn. I don't even know the the time uh, interval these turns are. Don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, beside the ship models, <laughs> this 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 tabletop simulator module is isn't really <laughs> nice to look at, is it? Imagine I was just using the blocks. Like, here's my fleet. I got some yellow blocks on a plain white paper with some pixely stuff on it. Beautiful. Anyways, back to the actual historical battle of Cape St. Vincent, which happened in 1797. And I thought I had it still open somewhere. Cape St. Vincent, 1797. Uh, this was actually when the Spanish, who initially fought against the French, the young French Republic as well during the Napoleonic Wars, had already sided with the French again. They were sort of for, for a long time uh, a natural ally of France. Uh, and the British, um, as one would assume, <laughs> attacked the Spanish here. So historically speaking, and is this the case today? How many ships do we have? Doesn't tell me. 4, 8, 12, um, 17, that's 22, 27. Historically speaking, the Spanish had 
much more. They had 25 ships of the line, 7 frigates, 1 brig, 4 armed merchant men, and the British had 15 ships of the line, 5 frigates, 1 sloop, 1 cutter, and the Spanish lost 4 ships of the line captured by the British. So, however, this scenario we are playing today might be totally different, of course. Oh, and I see Nelson was involved here. He was back then Commodore of a frigate. <clears throat> Passed through the Spanish fleet unseen. Thanks to heavy fog, he reached the British fleet of 15 ships on the 13th of February and passed the location of the Spanish fleet to Jervis, who was in what Jervis was in command of the victory, which later on would be under the command of Nelson himself. But Nelson, because of the fog, didn't know how big the Spanish fleet actually was. However, the Spanish didn't know about the British because of the fog <laughs> and continued to sail it towards Cadiz. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then the battle happened. And there were some weird maneuvers, as far as I can tell from the sketches I have here. Yeah, I see some chaos there, turning around, getting through the path of each other. Not so much the British, I think. Though. Yeah, Kennedy's not a British. Interesting. The Spanish actually fought in two groups. They were split by a British battle line, just a straight line, which is what at the time most naval battles looked like, because it was easier to just say one after another and uh, sort of Make sure to not shoot at each other, and but also to keep the same speed and stuff. Hmm. 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 Okay. Won't take uh, too much of a look at the order of battle, the historical in detail. Let me just close that page again but there you got your little background there all right I assume we continued on I guess Peter is just not taking any new orders because my orders are pretty clear to to just move on straight for Cadiz that's where we're heading, unless the wind does change. And of course we want the Mathilde to get in front and she will... One, two, three, four... Make some more space in between. Uh, what was the signaling range? 14? Did they say 14? What is the measurement I'm using? It's grid, okay. So from this ship, 14 squares is here. That's interesting. Yeah, and depending on the speed, Nick's battle line squadron will sail at I am in a good position to relay back to him if there is enemy ahead. So I moved my ships, let's move the others as well, one, two, three, four, sort of, kind of, somewhat. Assuming that they 
did so. I'm assuming that's that Nick reacted to what he was doing there. To prevent the collision with Amentis line. Hmm. Peter's writing. <clears throat> Maybe I get another screenshot. A signal from Nick heading east. Scouts only full sails. Yeah, because obviously he wants to stay in touch with us. So Nick also realized that we hadn't talked about our sailing speeds. So that fits perfectly with the orders I gave, which is plain sail for the frigates, which get another plus one, which raises them to full sails and full sails for my third rate ship of the line. Perfect. So that means that he has turned a little bit to go east. Nice. I don't know any Spanish shanty. There probably are some beautiful ones, but I don't think I know one. Let aside the fact that I don't speak Spanish, but anyways. I think they I have the models still a little bit too big to fit the squares. Let me check with the blocks. How big is Oh it's actually bigger than a square, so then I've I have them too small. Or the spacing was alright before that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, normally they would be a bit farther away from each other, of course. Because, uh, especially with these ship sailing ships, you just, you can't just stop your ship, you know. It's just, I mean, even if you get the sails down, but, or up, up, I should say, um, it will just move on naturally. So, the captain always needs to think ahead quite a bit. And, and ideally to know what's going on. But anyways. Only full say, yeah. I think also, I mean, that not only Nick wants us to stay within signaling range, but also to prevent the enemy from cutting in between us. If, I mean, there's still the option that the enemy might come from the south, southeast, and just try to cut us off. Who knows?
<clears throat> I was just thinking about making some coffee, but maybe it's too late, at least for me too late to drink some coffee today. Right, let me use the time in between. I'm sorry that the, the game is moving so slowly for now. There will be more action, I think, and more tension once we get into contact with the enemy. I got a screenshot. Can you believe? Turn five. Hmm, interesting. So the material did not sail ahead, but we are now about here. Morty is somewhere here, like so. And we got Nick behind us. And Amentus is one, two, three, four squares and turning in. I don't know where Merlin is, of course, because he's just too far away. However, I can see that Reddy is avoiding to hit Morty and crash with him. She's coming in. Handy. All right. Yeah, Morty should make some speed probably then. Interesting. Sailing all of you, sailing speeds.
Hey, yeah. Hello. Okay, so you're uh, you're, you're full sails um, and moving towards Cadiz as it stands. Uh, you can see your uh, southern squadrons uh, veering off uh, mm -hmm. to the south. Uh, and what can you see? You can see the head of a British uh, squadron, uh, seemingly on an intercept course um, towards those uh, southern uh, allied uh, squadrons. Okay, where are they, relatively speaking? To your southeast. All right. But they're, they're off. They're off in the distance. Okay. Right, I, I just continue them. They are within um, artillery range if you were to bear on them, but currently they're not, they're not in angle of your guns at the moment. Yeah, no, I, I'm good. I I just need to get eyes on Cadiz. Back to you, Jan. Back to you shortly. Yep, thank you. Alright, we got some Brits somewhere down here. Uh, let me just paint them in to my southeast and of intercepting course. So let's assume they are coming this way. That's all I know. Let me see, can I take a screenshot of a broadside? Let me, let me see. I need to hit the trigger on the right. No, probably not as good. Uh, have I still the folder open? Yes, I have with the screenshots. Did a lot of screenshots there. <laughs> good, good, good. So there is some action coming that's that's a good sign or a bad sign i don't know so if they are sending a squadron to intercept what is their plan And uh, 
folks on the Discord. I just sent the screenshots to the Discord, to my Discord server, and folks are enjoying the broadsides. <clears throat> I mean, as I said, the ships can even burn, so. <laughs> These 3D animated modules, I mean, they can even shoot uh, chasers, right? Hello? Okay, that's quite the explosion explosion for two chaser guns, but <laughs> they are animated, so that's cool. And they can burn. The whole ocean is burning with them. <laughs> okay. But these are some, some nice fire effects. Maybe I can get those to use them in other Kriegsfeuer modules. What would be cool would be if there was a state for broken masts or something like that. That would be cool. The ships went up, the tide was high, my ship went through the sea. Let me see, maybe I can find some Creative Commons shanty music on YouTube just to put in the background, some, some little background ambience noise. <clears throat> oh, Marshall is actually also streaming, so if you... I don't want to take a look at the, at, uh, the stream, of course, but if you want to see the British perspective of things, at least Marshall's perspective, Go to the YouTube channel of the International Kriegsspiel Society and compare our two perspectives. That would be interesting probably to, to switch between both streams back and forth to see what the other side believes is going on. Although I of course do not know which sort of command he holds. Um, C, Shanti, and then... Where are the settings? Settings for... Creative Commons. <laughs> Some German shanty core. Oh my lord. Please not. Could put on some Irish music, maybe. Drunken Sailor, yeah. Old classic. Let me take this one. Music down. Let's listen to this one. This is under Creative Commons, and so if it's good, we keep it going, otherwise, we just turn it off. Oh. I think that's a famous one, right? Even I know the, the tune. It's the Willow Man. Blah 
It's not quite the, quite the music you would uh, expect on a sailing ship, but anyways. <laughs> I like it though. Probably nothing to to play all day, but anyways. In the worst case, we will return to the good old pipe and drum. get in the right mood for, for this quick spiel here. <laughs> Skull. Or probably Spanish would say salute, I guess. Okay, all right, everything is appearing before you now, so um, you'll see in the head of that southeast column uh, is actually being visualized to you as the victory. Uh, and then you are seeing uh, uh, two squadrons um, uh, moving at your east, southeast mm -hmm. of you. So, I they are see. blocking your path for sure now. Right. Um, so, I want to adjust course then. A few ticks to the north. Okay. Yeah, and I will give a signal. I can just write that down, signal red, I believe. Okay. So you're going to go northeast somewhat? Yeah, somewhat, right. Okay. Okay. Can I see actually on the screenshot which direction are they, are they sailing north? <clears throat> the, oh, the uh, from your perspective, uh, the British uh, squadrons of. Stalin North. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. That, that should be good. Uh, apart from the uh, the southeast, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. again would appear to be sailing towards your southern yes. forces. Yeah. All right. All right okay, good. Yeah, I'll you. leave you to it. Yep. Okay, that's a signal red. Signal red. Hoist the red flag. <laughs> well, not the red flag, but, you know, whatever red might be in in, in flag code. <clears throat> probably just the red flag, I don't know. No, probably, probably three flags. So, let's adjust our positions. We have moved on a little bit bit until here maybe then Nick is sort of behind us now here Amentis has 
on the straight line again. He is at the same speed as Nick is. And the southern ships have turned to here, I think. Something like that. And already... They are on a collision course again. Like so. A little bit more straight than that. And this one is Merlin is going up behind Nick. And then we got British. British lines. Whoops. British lines. One is coming in. Like so. One is sailing up north. Like so. And another one, a light. This is a light squadron. Is about there. And they are all moving into our direction. So going there won't do. And I hear that they have opened fire. So we still don't know what's going on here, but I think if the enemy is that close already, this is a code red for us. I mean, in the end, it's up to Nick to decide, but... All right, so how many ships do I see? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> What would you guys think uh, in the chat? Is this a code red? If the enemy is like sort of, I mean, they are really close, right? So could this, this is, this is a code yellow at least. The enemy is in front of Cadiz, but I don't think that we can get around them. Because, I mean, they can just turn around, and as we are moving down here, they can get back onto the... Well, they, had, they would have to turn around to the east, right? To avoid getting stuck in irons. So let me grab, do I have a red with a bit of transparency? No. So let's see. If we would avoid them now and go to the south, we can try that, of course. But how do we get out if there is enemy to the south? We cannot just go through them. That's suicidal because we can be shot from two directions. So we would have to turn into the wind to get to Saint Cap, uh, sorry, Cape Saint Vincent. So that's that's a risky move, and then the enemy has the weather gauge of, gauge, of course, and can get in behind and rake us. Uh, so what we would want to do is turn to via east to the north to the west to avoid that. 
if we continue on and do not try to get around, and there is actually nothing in the cell, then we could get in behind them. And the enemy then would have to turn to the east to not get stuck. Yeah. In. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I need to tell you. Yes. Uh, that you can hear cannon fire to your east. To the east? Okay. Yeah. Directly to you, essentially directly in, in the direction you were you were going on until you started to veer uh, northeast. Huh. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know, essentially you. I should have told you that in the previous uh, briefing, but I hadn't been told that you, you could hear it. But then I have been advised that you can. So mm -hmm. yeah, no problem. That, that's the situation. Interesting. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Cannon fire to the east. So are they bombarding Cadiz or what's going on here? I mean, it all depends on Nick now. <clears throat> it all depends on Nick. With the code red given by me, he knows that there is enemy in front, in between Cadiz and our fleet. And he can probably see the southernmost column of the enemy, of the British ships. So... What is he going to do with that? I do fear a little bit what Reddy's column will do because they have heavy ships and if they have to... I mean, first of all, they need to avoid <laughs> crashing into Morty's Vanguard squadron. But if they both like try to turn north, they will be entangled with the British unless the British also turn north and then they will have like proper battle distance here to deliver some broadsides onto each other otherwise I don't really know I mean if the British get in between there before they can turn then they will have to go this way I mean going into irons is still the, the option there but <laughs> and they are split off Oh, that does not look too good, I must say. Hmm, very interesting. Hello, yeah. Hello. Okay, so apparently there's this thing where frigates don't fire on uh, uh, the first rate of the line uh, ships, um, but your frigates have a chance to hit um, uh, the British uh, um, first rate. Uh, ship. So I think the me mechanism is if they do fire, and then, then those frigates are fair game for everyone. There, there's some kind of honor code, but it, it's up to you. Dan hmm. wants to give you the option of actually firing upon that if you wish with your frigates. Um, no, so far not. So, okay, all right. Very good. Is there actually, I didn't know about that, is there actually an honor code that frigates would not shoot at ships of the line? Doesn't make any sense to me. That's kind of weird, I mean... I could imagine the other way around, what you know, but... Frigates, you want to do you want to you want to use the ability, the, like the agility and speed of the frigates to 
to get raking shots on the enemy anyways, but I mean, I don't want to fire in this situation because the enemy is so far away and just makes no sense to to waste ammunition and and wear down the crew, you know? They are, they're getting wary for sure if they have to shoot over an extended period of time. What I want to do if I can is, is engage the light British squadron there, which seems to have four frigates. So I could have a slight advantage with my third rate ship there. That's why I have ordered to change course to maybe align with these. And if not, then turn around and get away. But I mean, naturally, if it's all a bit complicated, if I wanted to <laughs> keep the weather gauge and really use it, then I would have to go to the southeast. But putting my my light squadron in between two battle line squadrons, that's just not going to happen. I, I would just evaporate there. Maybe I could uh, provoke them to fire onto each other. But yeah, I don't think so. And when I when I turn down here, these guys will be heading west i assume and then i get the raking fire so nope thank you very much not for me All right. <laughs> what do you think <clears throat> dear viewer what do you think is the best advice what should we do in this uh, situation here i will have to make sure to keep an eye on on the centissima i think there would have even been a an actual 3d model for the centissima trinidad but uh, we assume just this this first right here, the Admiral's ship, is the Centinima for now. Um, there's our Admiral, Admiral Nick. <laughs> um, he will have to make the decision whether we pull out or engage. Engage. Hmm. I mean, hmm. another option I see is that we isolate this squadron to the south, like by bringing our these three line squadrons in between. But where where would I go then? If I go up here and the others turn southeast south then i will be out of contact anyways hmm but let's keep let's keep the sails up for now or down however you want to correctly call that to go at full sails So 
certainly not the time to slow down and get to battle sails already. Maybe next turn that will be the case. <clears throat> Anybody in the chat with opinions on strategies, how to react? Let me see who got we in the chat. Anyways, I know Stefan's strategy is still there. I see Jody Moon, I think. Icaro Oliveira, nice to have you. I guess most of the others are just some weird bots. <laughs> If not, just say hello and let us know how you how you are doing today. Hope all of you enjoy the weekend. I know we have some more viewers who are not locked into Twitch, so they are not displayed to me, but I know they are there and I hope they enjoy. Even though it's going a little bit slow again, enjoy the game. It will get more and more interesting, I think. Yeah, right. I have. Yeah, yeah. We have the weather gauge, but yeah. I don't know either. There could be more down here, but shall we risk it? Shall we risk sailing past these British lines? Shall we risk that? And I mean, the wind can can change, at least I believe. I mean, in reality it, it can, of course, but can also in the game, do the umpires roll for that? I believe so. Can't remember if um, Daniel said anything about that. Peter is giving me another report, sending some screenshots. So let me just use for the British, I just gonna use the shits, I think, because it's easier to identify them real quick. 
copy those place them over here and we have four frigates in a row sailing north directly in this position and i will put them with the movement arrow in the in the right direction right now we got ship of the line two three third rates uh, ship of the line at the head of the column there Like here, they continued their path, and we did see <clears throat> what I think was the victory to ourselves. Let's see. We got that, and then we got two more first raids, I think. From what we could see, at least. And they were like so last turn. <clears throat> and this turn they are probably somewhere here. Like so. So my column heads this way now. my squadron I got Nick on my heels who seems to have put up some speed on the ships we got a mentis there I can see that already has turned completely soft at least I believe he has Or is this actually Morty's column? Yeah, probably so. Okay. So let's hope they did not crash into each other. They should be over here then. And Merlin probably behind us. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, by now there is no way <laughs> that we bring the main body of the fleet around to the south. And I think here there is even more behind this column, which we cannot see because there were ships coming up last turn. So probably here is, this might be the main battle battle line. And uh, let me see if I can decipher which one the victory was, because I didn't really understand which one Peter meant. He said... Hello, yeah. Hello. Okay. Um, so, yep, yeah, the, the, the firing is now starting in, in earnest. Uh, the, the British uh, frigates... Uh, uh, to your direct east of firing upon your your uh, squadron and you could see uh, the British squadron to your southeast is also firing though not in your direction because they're, they're facing off to the the southwest themselves uh, so yeah the, the, you can see the two British squadrons are firing uh, in your south southeast uh, you can make out uh, these uh, allied uh, squadrons to your south west now uh, are firing uh, 
and you could see uh, Nick and Armentus's squadrons uh, trailing uh, behind your your squadron. Okay. Can I see any signal on Nick's ship? Uh, he hasn't sent a signal. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well then. Um... Uh, and then beyond that, uh, you can make out another British squadron following uh, the squadron that's to your direct southeast. Southwest, sorry. Pardon. No. Yeah, southeast. Southeast. Yeah, southeast. Southeast, yeah. I'm right. Sorry. Yep. Okay. All right. Then. Hmm. Let's hold this course for a little bit longer and then we try to, even though there is, I assume, quite some range there, we try to rake the column or the squadron that is coming up from the southeast. Yeah. And once we have done that, we turn north to then engage the British frigates. Okay. So you're already being told by uh, your captain that you, you have been raking in the last minutes upon those uh upon that uh that squadron to your right. southeast so, okay. so you've been you're doing well rather well you believe okay well we continue okay. that as long as we we bear and then we head north and engage the frigates excellent all right okay thank you sounds good so far right even though I'm not in the position I should be in. So I want to continue this way while well, this uh, map is a little bit, yeah, doing stuff uh, because it is so big. That's the, the tile is so big. And there is is this issue where out of a sudden you paint in the, in the air. But yeah, that's the basic idea. So we are already putting fire onto these. And once we get up here, we want to engage these because, as it appears, the enemy is already firing onto us. And I don't know if these guys are firing as well. I don't think that's the case. But our guys should be in a good position to rake this call. Oh, well, I wanted to ask him in which squadron the, the victory was. but <clears throat> Because I can't really tell from the screen. Screenshots, can I? <laughs> Not really. Could be either. Could be either this one, this one there, or this one. We will see, we will see. Do, 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 do. Has anybody of you any experience with the Buttonberg uh, course indicator? This is a tool to determine the relative position of two ships to each other or convoys to each other um, quite an interesting little mechanical tool which was used uh, throughout World War II to determine like um, convoys and interceptors and, and patrols and escorts and stuff um, yeah Um, the because the reason I'm asking is because I have one made made out of paper, which I'm pulling out every year or so for some time to to think about how to turn this thing into a sort of game part 
I want to, what I want to, what I have in mind is a solitaire board game, an Age of Sales solitaire board game, which actually makes use of relative positioning, relative movement of two ships. So that would be, player would be in command of one, one brig or later on in a frigate or whatever. Um, and then playing some campaigns, like I have in mind a, a French captain because there is this myth of the over over mighty Royal Navy, which of course in the overall uh, perspective is is true at least uh, after Trafalgar. But um, the the French actually did pretty well when it came to small scale engagement, like ship on ship or just a few ships um, and commerce raiding and such. They had some some pretty pretty darn effective. Um, Corsairs there in the Indian Ocean and and uh, even the quasi war with the USA they had, where they actually I mean, if, if there would have been an actual war, a naval war they would have won. Um, in addition to fighting the, the Royal Navy, that is, but yeah, so that would be of interest to like shift the perspective a little bit back from this myth of the. British almighty sea power to the to, to the underdog so and um, there are quite a lot of board games uh, and also of course miniature games um, focusing on age of sail naval tactics some more on the fleet bases some more on like ship on ship engagements but I haven't seen any really good system to incorporate and display relative movement of two ships to each other. I know there is a, um, it's called the Tactical Wheel or whatever by Gina Willis, which she designed um, to accompany her board game on the, on the naval aspect uh, of the War of 1812. So that is like British on, on, U.S. ships um, on the Great Lakes, which can be played just as the board game, as an abstract board game, so to say. But if you want to really get into detail, you could play it with an additional map and this mechanism, this wheel mechanism, which has sort sort of three layers and and based on the like you set the wind direction, you set your own ship's direction, and you set the direction the enemy is in. And based on that, you get a a code, so to say, or a number, which you then compare to a table, a very extensive table, that then tells you where the enemy ship, so the AI ship, which you are not playing, would move, which sort of maneuver it would try to make. And that's pretty interesting. Um, I studied that a little bit. It seems to be very well thought. Um, it has mainly been designed to sort of um, to be used on the on the operational map, so to say, like on an ab abstract level. And then once you get into contact, you would switch to any other game you want to use to resolve the combat. Um, and if you are into ship on ship. Uh, engagements age of sale i would recommend post captain that seems to be i haven't played it but i have seen some videos and read after action reports that seems to be quite the system for tabletop games like not board games but miniature games if you want to play these out like ship on ship or two ships on two ships or whatever uh, not fleet actions um yeah that's that's something i from time to time come back to to think about and i really i really find the battenberg course indicator is is a very intriguing tool but i haven't found a way to make it playable so to say yet that is <laughs> i know from other board game designers that they have um, but they are operating similarly with with having a an idea in, in their drawer and coming back to it every few months or years or so and out of a sudden it makes click and there you have it
yeah, let's see. Let's see how that goes. So generally speaking, because I have some more board game design ideas, uh, I'm doing some research on, on some topics. I'm a fan of very streamlined systems, so easy to play systems that nonetheless have a, a great depth of decision making and and uh, historical flavor i don't want to say don't want to say accuracy because that's so misleading and, and misunderstood concept um but like being historically informed is maybe the better term there and um yeah but they need to be i find it that there are so many great board games on on very interesting historical topics but they are so overly complicated that you never get them out to play regularly so yeah the the high art of of board game design for me is that you have the most streamlined system that nevertheless provides the most in-depth sort of decision making necessity for the players there you go Yeah, very well. <clears throat> so these are just some, some side projects I'm coming back to from time to time. Uh, you need to be in, a, in the right mood and have some some space and time to think about it and do research. Uh, as for the situation, you're going to have a problem raising that and that English squadron and getting pinched by the land. Yep, 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 yep. However, <laughs> I mean, the problem I have is that I don't know what the Admiral wants me to do now, given the situation. I don't think any of the plans we came up with is feasible anymore. So either... If I'm up here, I turn west again. And then I have to like turn through the wind, which I hope my my lighter ships will be able to do somewhat effectively. Or I try to sneak <laughs> sneak past along the coast and get into into Cadiz and <laughs> let my team have the fun. <laughs> Or to bother about what's going on there. <clears throat> yeah, we will see, we will see. But that's a good point. And the coast is not far away. Need to keep an eye on that. 
<laughs> not want to crash onto the beach. So let's see when 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 will Peter return to <clears throat> give me a new report. Oh, he's already out there talking to Merlin. <laughs> did did more leave us i don't see him in the voice channel anymore I mean, okay, we're already three hours in, 3.20, but that would be a shame, right? Anyways, it's an open Saturday, so these things can happen, and that's no problem at all. I guess the umpires will just bot the squadron then, based on the latest orders, the last orders he gave. Let's get a bit of a view of the ships. I mean, it would be more beautiful if I had the British also set up, right? Hmm. I could do that, but let's not bother with that for now.
update another new report from Peter. What's what's up? Half an hour in. <laughs> they are probably rolling uh, some combat dice. So there's another update. I see some dice, but I don't know what they mean. <laughs> see some flipped counters, but I don't know what they mean. Well, I know what they mean, but... So these folks are here, these folks are here. I'm now... There, I think. Nick has turned in. I don't know what's going up with uh, or going on with Amentus. Yeah, but certainly we are split now, and that's that's an issue. Don't know how these British squadrons react. Okay. Code red from the admiral. Code red from the admiral.
Okay, so I guess they are now trying to to turn <clears throat> here and then I can't even use the measuring tool that this map is so huge I and can we can we even place pieces there? <laughs> Uh, not really. Yeah, well, it will be funny to see how that works. <laughs> Anyways, they are turning and we are now ordered to screen the retreat. I hope these guys... Are they are still in... Oh, I guess they are out of signaling range by now. So that will be interesting. Hmm. I hope they don't get cut off there so I can remove all the lines I think so it's a code red Nick has made his decision Hello again. Hello, Peter. Okay, uh, so your squadron is coming under some amount of fire, but uh, so far none of the ships are showing too much uh, damage, uh, and you continue to rake uh, this uh, uh, ship of the line coming mm -hmm. towards you, and uh, you, you think you're doing starting to do some serious damage to it as it's approaching you. Um, Great. Beyond that, so uh, you've seen Nick's uh, squadron is firing uh, as well, um, and yeah, the southern squadrons are a bit too far away from you, but you can just about make out the British uh, squadron uh, moving to your south uh, there, uh, and you can see on Memphis's uh, squadron uh, behind you seems to be making a a strange turn to the north um so maybe mm -hmm. that's part of the plan uh, but that they're doing that um and you've still got these uh these frigates these british frigates that are to your northeast that are okay. putting some fire down, down upon you as well so well i think we reduce to battle sails then okay yep and i see yeah, we keep the course for now and try to continue raking the enemy. Okay. Very good, Jan. Thank you. So that's an interesting situation here. So we're going to slow down a little bit to keep this, I mean, if we can land some, some nice wrecking hits on their powder maybe, blow them up, that would be quite something, especially as they are in, in still in formation there. However, we are now tasked to screen the retreat of our fleet, and we need to think about how to actually get this done right let me grab some blue pen so the wind uh, apparently hasn't changed at least 
At least Peter didn't tell me anything about that. I guess I will continue to about here, so it might be one or two more turns, raking this column. Then I will head to the north and try to prevent this column of frigates to cut here, although they would go fairly, fairly slow, I guess. Then yeah, this, these maps are sometimes these huge maps. They are really, really a hassle sometimes. Wish you get me there. Yeah. Okay, this way it seems to work. Maybe I'm drawing in the sky again. So I will go over here. And then I need to. So the wind is pushing me this direction. If I turn into the wind at this point, that might be <laughs> might be an issue. What I would like to do, however, is to oh, come on, to cut back. Is that possible given the wind? Yeah, that should be possible if I make these this uh, this alliance turn there and either circle back and deliver another raking. I mean, depending on what they are doing, right? Or engage the fifth rate. And then I could turn again and get out. Is that something? <laughs> Weird drawings here. <laughs> Weird drawings. So, let me see, wind is coming from this direction. So I would probably then sit on this spot and, I mean, not doing this, this rounded turn here, but sit on the spot when I come in here and then I need to <laughs> this table, which... move here and then turn, turn away. Oh, well, the question is how much speed would I need going in there you know how much how much drive would I need uh, let me remove this these weird lines how much speed would I need to to get this this movement going through through the wind especially with my third rate don't know yeah no worries no worries uh, there are always these downtimes in between so that's all good. In case you missed it, we got from our Admiral now the code red. He has uh, sort of uh, answered that, um, realizing that this column in the south is here splitting us apart, and the whole the whole fleet is now ordered to turn west and try to get past. Cape St. Vincent and evade the British fleet blockading Cadiz. That's now the plan. Um, and the orders for the light 
Vanguard squadrons are now to screen the retreat. And even though we are obviously quite mobile, as we got the lightest uh, ships available, um, this situation here with all the enemy squadrons coming up is a bit intimidating and restricting given the space we have. So I don't really know. I will continue to hear about there keeping up the raking fire. I've now reduced sails to battle sails. Then try to prevent, oh man, touch. Try to prevent the, uh, what are these? The uh, frigates to cut to the west. I can't even remove that, okay, cool. And then at some point I need to, <laughs> to make the turn in order to avoid the shoreline. And I will, give that's the wind, need to do it like so. But anyways, I mean, it leads me in between the two, right? So I could either run closer to the shore and then turn. I mean, I would always have to go into the wind, like, and then go away like so. Man, these, <laughs> these massive maps <laughs> screw up the everything the painting the drawing tool and the the placing of units they are always an issue with these huge tiles Uh, re risk of turning, turning to the south, splitting the squadrons, right, yeah, and then running west. Mm. What do you mean? So, ah, you suggest that I actually go around here and then cut in behind them, like so? Like do a do big S move? Hmm. I sort of like that. Although, no. Can I stand the fire of this squadron and afterwards this squadron? I mean, getting in behind them to wreck them once, once more would be beautiful, of course. Don't get me wrong. But puts me in between this squadron, this squadron, and this squadron. I would have faced them all. Like a reverse C. Like turning immediately, so? Hmm, so that these guys are out of range, right? And then I only fight this squadron? Rake them from behind and then get out. However, I mean, I can do that. However, I will be stuck about where they can get off their broadsides. So that's maybe the 
the most uh, or the, the least optimal situation or position you can be in of course they are continuing to move but i don't know at which which uh, rate they are moving um and i don't know what what these guys will do right i assume they are moving south to i think that's what peter said they are moving south to engage these two squadrons so maybe they are not to bother with but there might be more behind them of course i think he told me that there's something coming up here which let me take a look at the screenshots i cannot see yes still have to face the broadside that's that's true and possibly the raking fire of the frigates north like if they turn over and then just shoot me in the face the thing is that i cannot just like turn and then go back this way because of the wind that's my biggest concern that is my biggest concern what if i do the a close turn here i mean we are down to battle sails <clears throat> i can't do that either because i'm in irons so i cannot go this way down here at least not without without uh, what's that called in english though like sailing like like this to get up against the wind do you know what i mean to sail in the direction of the wind hmm like sailing in these zigzag lines very hard to the wind allows you to sail against the general direction the wind is coming from that's tacking yeah all right good although i think i think uh, tacking as such isn't that the like turning through the wind ah it's just travel against the wind all right yeah okay i can see that yeah and in, in German, it's like uh, Kreuzen, so I don't know. Crossing is, is the wrong word in English, but yeah. Yeah, traveling against the wind, that's certainly it. That would be the only way to, to get uh, to the southwest. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is actually the way to go. Just hoping to not being stuck here with another British squadron or whatever coming up. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not a. I'm not a sailor either um hmm. however i did grew up uh, at the at the shoreline so of northern germany um and i did i did a sail a few times with a sailing boat but actually with the uh, the what's that called it i don't know the english word but in germany we call it an, an optimist well, it's just one person fits in this thing, just a I don't know, teenager, kid or a teenager. Uh, sailed that for a while and friends had a yacht, like middle sized and we, yeah. 
Merlin is signaling red understood. Okay. Well, I think I have the red signal up anyways all the time. But yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's unclear what is what is behind here and if we can just get past. Uh, the only problem I do see is that I let the, the Admiral down then, right? I do not screen him. If the enemy wants to go after him, they can. On the other hand, it might be the only feasible move for me to get out here. And then if I made the turn, I mean, I can come back. And the other issue is, there's another issue. Um, if I fire on them from this side the whole time, and then go over to the other side, this hull side will be intact still, even if I damaged their larboard side. Larboard, starboard. Starboard is to the left, larboard that must be. Well, 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 so Merlin has received that signal order and the Mantis is already doing his weird turn north, as Peter said it. So they will get away. The question is, do these two realize what is going on? Because they are out of signaling range, even if the last ship, uh, maybe they should be able to to see that. I don't know if it's bound to the Admiral's ship or to any ship of the formation. So they might get the signal as well. Hopefully. Anyway, they have to turn into into the wind. They are almost in the wind already. Not not just yet, but soon, very soon. Um they could have, I mean, the option for them is because they are closer to the wind, right? They can dictate these British ships what to do. So they can actually, Morty and, and Ready, they would need to coordinate to get into a, a battle formation, but they could actually do this and always have the wind on their side. That's easy for them. Because they are closer to the wind than the British are. But at, I'm at a position where it's no longer feasible to, to stay closer to the wind, unfortunately. So right, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, Nick. Uh, <laughs> you will probably be shot at by the British and I'm very sorry for that. I will do this, this C move. Well, let's, let's just remove them all. So that is then new orders I need to give to Peter because previously I said I wanted to turn north afterwards to engage these, but I will go in, go into the east, southeast and have proper, a proper broadside battle here with this squadron. Let's hope our wrecking fire on the first raid actually did manage to deal some good amount of damage. That's very important for us now. If that's out of the game and we have our third rate, I mean, that's that's even a first rate, you know, that's a very big battleship. They will be able to put quite some fire on us. And if we sail so close to them with our fifth rate frigates, <laughs> I mean, they, they stand no chance. So I really hope that this raking fire, especially from the third rate, put some serious damage onto, at least onto the enemy uh, gun uh, decks so that they are not able to hit us with so many cannons. What's that, the first raid? 104 guns probably, or 94 guns or whatever. Maybe 120 guns. So there is, there is a risk. There is a risk. And these, wait, 
these are all third rates right okay so that's poof that'll be quite the fight <laughs> uh, so maybe we should put up more sail as soon as we turn over again to get across across them or past them as, as quickly as possible and then once we are past them we go to battle sails again to really quickly make the tacking and then come up on their Give them some raking fire from behind and then turn around. Ooh, ha, ooh. That's tense. Mm, that is tense. I, I hope my squadron even survives this maneuver. <laughs> yeah. We will see. Hmm. Yeah, speed would be <laughs> paramount, at least to at least <clears throat> to get past their broadsides. <clears throat> Once we are, I mean, we still don't know what's behind them, right? Assuming there is nothing, um, we could stay behind them for a little bit. I mean, we, We'll probably do that anyways because we are going, we are attacking through irons. Um, but or hopefully not going into irons, but attacking slowly around here. Um, so that's all right as, as far as we can get the raking shots in and maybe get some of the third rates um, severely damaged. Then we need to get up some speed again to get past there. <laughs> yeah, that that will probably be then the biggest issue: not getting past their, not getting past their their uh, larboard side, but their starboard side because of the wind, and because after the tacking we need to need some time to get up to speed again. Anyways, no matter how many sails we put up. Or down. <laughs> no matter how many sails we hoist. Ah, uh, okay. So what we can see is apparently the Matilde has taken quite some fire. Doesn't look to be in the best shape. Um, the squadron has turned. And the frigates are engaging us now. That's why the Matilde is not looking so good. We got Nick behind us. I don't know when he wants to turn, but he is putting fire onto this squadron as well. So, boy, can I, can I even do that still? From from the looks, I don't know what what it actually says, but. It appears to me that the Matilde is suffering quite a bit right now. <clears throat> huh. Can I still do this move then? With only three ships in shape. <laughs> I just don't think so. Straight at the frigates. Hmm. I guess I want to want to prevent the frigates from from getting through and attacking the or slowing down the main the battle line. So they will continue in this direction, assumedly. 
and then I want to still stay in front of them because in regard to these I still got the weather gauge so if I can get in front of those and rank those as well that might be the way to go and to screen off Nick's ships huh. hello again Peter hello okay uh, fighting has been thick and fierce uh, in your location um, you're obviously getting close to this uh this British ship of the line, and you've got these frigates that are, that are raking uh, to your north east here. And uh, unfortunately, your uh, your wee frigate, the Matilda, has been crippled. So the front of your the ship in the front of your line has been crippled uh, in the battle. So uh, you have you have you are now moving at battle speed, and you can see Nick's uh, squadron is moving quickly in your rear to, to overtake you from mm -hmm. from behind there um beyond that uh everything else is a bit distant to you actually you, you can hear the the sound of cannon fire to yourself um and that's about it so as regards to what you can perceive so hmm. yeah well um i will so um the, sh the Matilde being crippled means she cannot keep up uh, the same speed, or is she just unable to continue to fight? I think she's going to be able to go in the same direction, um, and she's going to be a little bit effective, but um, not very good for maneuvering. I think she'll, she'll have an opportunity to maybe repair, but obviously, probably unlikely, soon as there's cannons whizzing all around her, so yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, depending on, so the the captains need to keep an eye on what Nick does, obviously, but um, we want to turn north now and try to get in front of the, the enemy frigates. Okay. So the idea is that we screen Nick to make his turn to the west here. Uh, we okay. stay at battle sites for now. Okay. Very good. Great, thank you. Cheers, yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And also, I mean, I'm screening the first raid ship of Nick anyway now. So that cannot put any fire onto the enemy first raid. And with the order of. Uh, of code red given i believe his next move will be to turn away uh, and i'm just going to slowly try to screen him from the frigates and then yeah i don't know from there we will have to to see how it goes try to maybe make the turn there and then go very hard to the wind to in battle sails to stay behind him so that should be an interception course here for the for the frigates oof
Alrighty, alrighty. Got some new viewers or somebody came back. That's nice. I see Emanuele's in the chat there. Ikaro still there with us. Jody Moon, maybe. So stop. Super. Nice to have all of you. <clears throat> we are in a, in a tricky situation here by now. Well, I meant to probably continue to, to turn. And as Merlin received the order as well, I think he will start to turn here as well on the spot. On the spot. So they should be they should be safe unless <laughs> there is another British squadron. We still don't know. I think we we believe to have seen one behind this one. Uh, but we still don't know. There might be another one coming from somewhere from our rear, maybe, who knows? Or one that is trying to go like really hard really hard to the wind and then cut in behind us. That could perfectly be the case. Like sail the whole game to here and then go in. And if, if that would be the case, then these two squadrons would be in a, in a very, really tough spot there, but yeah. We will see. For now, we will have some birds scripts from our side of the ship. Get some broadsides out. Can I actually activate them for all of them? No, unfortunately not. Maybe because they are not all of the same type. Oh, still not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still not. I hope the the sounds of the tabletop simulator are not too loud for you. Otherwise, I need to turn that a little bit lower. So Stefan, you probably suggested a crossing the T here, right? To go between them. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if maybe they are too mobile to really get caught that way. And with this squadron, I mean, where will they go, right? We are, we are faster than them anyway, so they will, I believe, turn to the northeast and then deliver more broadsides on us. We are down to just buying time, yeah. I mean, that's, that's our objective anyways, right? The objective was <clears throat> originally to reach Cadiz, the harbor of Cadiz over here. And... To avoid any serious engagement with the enemy, because the enemy crews and ships are much better than ours, especially the crews are better trained. So, avoid battle. And if we cannot get through to Cadiz, then at least head for Cape St. Vincent, which is this southernmost, or is it actually the southernmost? No, but the westernmost edge of Portugal uh, and sail past that in order to evade the British fleet and evade engagement so yeah we don't really want to want to fight the superior British ships here at least not in in a serious sort of engagement
Right, right, right. Okay. Hmm. I'm wondering when. <laughs> when when Nick will um, make his turn. I assume next next turn, but yeah. This table is so. Why did they make the map that big? Couldn't they just? I mean, probably to have this the this grid <clears throat> to display a specific uh, length of movement, but I mean, it's a grid, so you can just could have had the map at the half the size, right? We also had the same issue, especially with the drawing, but also with with placing. Uh, oh, sorry, with placing <clears throat> pieces on the map on these huge maps, on like the Chances Will map, I think. Although I'm not so sure about that, but Gettysburg had some issues on the outer edges, although it's not not far as big as this one. They were. Oh, like the the Meckle maps, they have these issues as well, on the outer edges, just too big for the table. And then producing some weird physics here in Tabletop Simulator. I know that there is now, uh, that's possible to port over some stuff. You need to actually adjust some things but you can port over to tabletop playground now which is basically the same thing as tabletop simulator it might be a bit better moddable like scripting and stuff might be a little bit better than and a little bit more stable than in tabletop simulator i think some of the members of the iks have played around with that i I think I remember Damon talking about it because we were thinking about maybe switching uh, we discussed that briefly at least but uh, then decided against it because at that point when we had the discussion it was not able to just simply port stuff over and yeah well most of our or all of our modules we use are for tabletop simulator and therefore most of our members do own tabletop simulator and in part just bought it because of the international Kriegspiel society to play Kriegspiel, right uh, and they didn't know about it beforehand and didn't know about all the board games and stuff you can play with that um so we decided uh to to stick with tabletop simulator for now but at some point it might be reasonable to change to tabletop playground and by the way, talking about the International Kriegspiel Society, if you want to check us out, go to our brand new website, which is still uh, to be found under kriegspiel.org. Um, I did completely rebuild it, um, although Marshall and Nick did a little bit of work and Marshall provided some text for it. Most of the stuff you can see there right now is, is done by me. Uh, and we are still we are still working on that. There are still some pages missing, which is like the how to play page, a page with some player guides, and such. But and to uh, to add much more resources to the books and the maps resources pages. But we really want to be that new website like sort of a a resource hub because we have so many map databases and like actual maps being posted on the discord server that we want to make those available to interested players and and <clears throat> umpires people who want to host their own games so that you just can go to creekspiel.org and find everything there we have many of the historical rule sets linked there you can read those 
as far as they are, uh, are available freely. Um, you can get auto system there. You can, there's a link to the Kriegspiel 2022 system, which Marshall designed, which you can buy and download via the Kriegspiel Depot edgy, Etsy, <laughs> edgy. It's a very edgy store. Uh, the Etsy store of the International Kriegspiel Society. Um, so yeah. We have a map there now, so if you are a member of the International Kriegspiel Society, we have such the, the custom um, Google map, with, this is Google My Map, I think it's called, where you can place a, a, a pin on the map, like roughly, approximately, where you are located, and you can put, if you want to, there's no need to, but you can, if you want to, put your name or your online username or whatever, uh, maybe your email if you want to into the description of that pin so that um, first we can see where around the globe everybody is and second um, those those members who want to and a are able to host in-person games can like choose a different color than everybody else which is green in that case um, to allow people to know who is in there rough proximity and then allow them to coordinate like in-person games if they like to as i said that's that's all free and voluntary and nobody needs to to put any actual contact details into that public map but if you want to put your discord handle or whatever into that you can yes and i have i've been working on the website quite a bit over the last weeks um Still a lot to do, still a lot to, to optimize there, especially I think the mobile version needs some optimization. We have prepared quite an extensive um, blog sort of system. We will have the so-called dispatches, which once we get up and running will probably be posted uh, weekly. And the dispatches then are a sort of mother post which link to every new other blog post published within this one week. And these other blog posts then will be after action reports, game announcements, uh, posts on whatever new videos we found on Kriegspiel or new books, new interesting books or new thoughts on scenario design or some new tabletop simulator modules. We will have maybe some interviews with some of the practitioners we have in the International Kriegspiel Society who are actually teaching Kriegspiel at the university level and stuff. And, and what uh, may also be interesting, especially for those who are interested in this sort of concept of Kriegspiel and the tactical, strategical aspect of it, but don't have the time to actually play live games or even text, like play by text games. Uh, we will have the what is called the Kriegspiel problems. Those are inspired by von Moltke and um, I think it's called uh, Tactical Problems, is I believe the English title in German. It's called uh, Taktische Aufgaben, which is a book, and you still can get copies of that. Unfortunately, in most of the time without the maps, and you really need the maps to <laughs> to to. Uh, to work on these problems you know so there are different problems in this book laid out and they refer to maps and then they tell you this is the situation tactical situation you need to achieve this and that how do you want to do that and then it's meant to be used with other people right who do the same work on the same problem then they each of them like presents their solution their approach to how they would like to solve the problem and then it's discussed and that's i mean that's what kriegspiel even though that is obviously not a live kriegspiel or spiel of any sorts but is all about you know like doing this i mean we spend most of the time playing the games but that's not actually what kriegspiel is about it's it's the fun part so to say and we enjoy it and sometimes it's very slow like today it takes some time to resolve stuff that's perfectly fine but what Kriegspiel is all about is is actually more the more the debriefing, you know, the discussions, 
we have about how we made our plans, why we made our plans, why we chose this and that approach, why we made decisions to change, to alter this plan, to react to what then was the, by us, perceived reality at a given situation or point in time uh, within the game and reflect on that and reflect on then, so, so to say, after the, the game has concluded, knowing what has happened all around, like all, all around, uh, everywhere on the board, <clears throat> then reflecting on what you could have done and discussing this these different approaches and solutions and decisions all together and discussing with the umpires as well on how you think the resolution of stuff was and maybe, I mean, at, to some degree, this is also a discussion about history, you know, like, is this how this game runs and was resolved what we think based on what we know about history, what we think would be a sort of reasonable outcome. Again, as I said earlier, it's not about accuracy, historical accuracy, it's just, that's just nonsense, but is it a believable, plausible way the game went? Or do we need to sit and need to apply changes to the system used, right? Because this game today is, it's an open game, everybody can join, but it's also an experimental game. This, the system is new that is here being used and it's, it's always being further developed, further evolving. All our systems actually are. So that's also another reason why we have so few actually written down because most of our umpires who have developed their or designed their own like rule sets don't write them down and publish them because they keep evolving and working on them and they then they read another book about the history and I don't know the tactics or whatever psychology troop morale and whatever and then they make changes they apply changes to the system and we are discussing all these things after our games and and on the discord server it's uh, a, a huge part part of the discussion we are having on our discord service i mean there's obviously space and it's also happening a lot like just small talk stuff but um and specific designing stuff like where do i get a map and how do i how do i set up the tabletop simulator module and stuff but there's a, a major part of the discussions we have is about history and that's something i really enjoy and love and um, the connection of, of game simulation and this history thing that's what what really hooked me on Kriegspiel and and especially the learning the learning aspect because you have to yeah wrap your head around being in a situation where you don't know what's actually going on <laughs> and then and then make decisions based on that and react to contingencies and like changes of of the reality as you perceived it before it and in doing so you you actually learn a lot about yourself and you learn a lot about other players how they sort of approach given problems that's why i often say krikspul is not about war it's about the people you know connecting back to the history thing history is all about people right I know many, many folks and a big part of the public sort of popular debate about history is about accuracy, like did the tank actually drive that fast and could they actually like penetrate the front armor or whatever? But that's telling nothing about history, you know, that's not history. History is about people because it's made by people and written down by people and told by people and changed by people. That's also always a thing to keep in mind history is, is not there's no historical truth to be told yeah so that's my rambling i don't know how long like 50 minutes ramble on on history here maybe or on kriegspiel how what i like about kriegspiel there you have it make a clip of, out of it and then spread it all around the globe i don't know or just ignore it and i say what a lame guy is this here <laughs> It's not even moving the ships around. But as I see, I get a new report from Peter just in time. Perfect.
No, the Mathilde struck the colors. She struck the colors. Oh, damn it. They won't take it, and actually the third rate San Pablo is now in a bad shape as well. Ooh, boy. But there is the, the turn by Nick. He is he's turning away. Okay. That's at least something, and I assume then Amentus is doing the same. Same with Merlin. I don't know. They are all out of sight anyways, but it appears that I am slowly losing my squadron here. <laughs> the first raid uh, has... They have, they have actually made quite some... Quite a move here. Like so, and the frigates appear to be somewhere... If I can place them there, yes. This way I can, they are somewhere there. And they are now putting Wrecking Fire on us. So... <laughs> Maybe I should run myself. Just get away. Can I actually make a, a clip myself? I think so, right? Uh, do a clip. What? I did a clip and copied it somewhere, but I don't, <laughs> didn't even set the... I didn't even set the timer for that. I think I can do that afterwards. I did it with the Antidium game, I think, when we were when McClellan arrived and told us to to, to move back across. To pull back from uh, we were already so sort of part of across Burnside's bridge and he said, What the hell are you doing? Come back. And at that I mean the call the call was right, but um at that point in time what we saw in front of us were like was a complete confederate division annihilated and he called us back we were like what the hell don't you see what's going on it in hindsight it was it was just time to to pull out because behind that that crushed division there came a perfectly fresh supplied elite division <laughs> that would have just <laughs> Pounded on us into the ground, so. <laughs> yeah, anyways, we are in a bad spot. There's Peter, hello. Oh, hello, Jan. You you have been the uh, Spanish whipping boy. You've been the little, uh, <laughs> uh, what, do call, what do they call those little things? Uh, Padigo. Yeah. Uh, you've done a little dog uh, that's been getting whipped by the British here. Mm -hmm. All to the master, uh, Nick. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, your ship has been crippled. Uh, so it says here, from a mechanic point of view, that means that you can't, if you don't fire this turn, you can repair whatever damage has been done. Oh, yes, uh, please. So, okay, so you'll, you'll do that. But uh, obviously, yeah. you, you can see your, your little Matilda there has uh, struck its colours. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, um, so you're going to be kind of floating in the, that northerly direction now. So do you just want your your uh frigates your little frigates to kind of follow in behind you or do you want them to make what do you want them to do while you're Oof. preparing i think i, I think need they're... to keep them in place just to so that they pull some of the british fire yeah okay. i think i have to do that and you don't want to strike your colors no okay all right so you're going to go in that north direction and repair okay yeah, I need to screen Nick for a while, even if I lose my squadron. Okay. Right. Very good. 
Cheers, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, so I, I set her the Matilda at fire because I don't have a state where it actually <laughs> strikes the colors, but think that the Spanish flag is down. It's not burning the ship, but the flag has been pulled down. So they are striking the colors. My uh, commander ship is also crippled. I'm trying to repair it next turn, which means I cannot return fire onto the enemy. But uh, by now I'm under fire by a first raid, by three third raids and four frigates. So I'm <laughs> taking it all. Come at me, bro. I'm taking it all. Uh. That is something. Alrighty, so those of you in the chat, I see that uh, Stefan has to go AFK for a while now because he has stuff going on. That's that's all right, of course. No worries. Uh, I probably upload this anyways to YouTube later on. Although, yeah, I don't know how how entertaining it is to watch these afterwards. I would have to. I mean, I could do that on the on the side, you know. Let's do it. Anyways, those of you in the chat, feel free to share your impressions of the game so far and what you think about the, the situation we are in here. What I'm going to do while you may write that down, I mean, you are invited to do it all the time, of course, but um, go to my analytics on the YouTube, go to the studio. Go to the analytics. And can I then... Hmm. <clears throat> can I then... Linear warfare in the Seven Years War has the highest binding of viewers. That's interesting. Now that is interesting. So, well, overall speaking, only eight percent of the <laughs> only eight percent of the. Um, of the viewers keep watching after like 10 minutes but yeah <laughs> what do you expect uh, of a four hour video you know <laughs> okay so top video is right now the union forever hurrah boys hurrah which is a preview on on strategic command american civil war i need to continue that when i'm planning to do a multiplayer game but uh, with shared union control we need to figure out how to work with the overall resource the MMP, the military production points or whatever they're called uh, how to invest them into um, troop substitutions like reinforcements then recruitment uh, diplomatics and uh, uh, research sorry and then the next one, like the last 30 days, Fin des Jour, last battle of the RVB campaign for me personally, because my character died. Then for whatever reason, I do not know, but the Attentat 1942 video is still going strong. Year after year after year, it's one of the most viewed 
videos. That's just 30 minutes, a preview of Attentat 1942, which is very important game, I must say, from, from a historical, like, pedagogical or didactic perspective. Anyways, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, but can I go, can I, can I, can I, can I? Got no live content. I want to see. All the videos in the Kriegspiel playlist. Can I <clears throat> somehow take a look at these? Oh, and there are actually, one can see the videos when people subscribe, which video they were watching. Now that's interesting. So that might be some... I actually gained some with the Flashpoint campaigns. No, not Flashpoint. Is it Flashpoint campaigns? Operation Flashpoint? What's what is it called? The v We Go Hex Encounter game? Mm. Some Tropico, some Kriegspiel. Okay, interesting. Well, 73%. No, I'm the time frame I'm looking at now is since I since the channel has been created. Or at least December 2018. Back then the channel was already running, I think, for a year or so. So 73% of the viewers did not subscribe or were not subscribed to the channel, which is which is actually not that bad of a, of a quote there to have almost a third subscribers watching your videos. That's That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like, gender and age and stuff, that didn't really work. I don't know if they fixed that, but I knew that the these numbers are not, are not accurate anyways. But I still haven't found the <clears throat> an option to take a look. Let me go to further settings yeah and actually the my preview video on attentat which is in german sorry for all the english viewers that has more than 7000 views since upload that's pretty interesting so it's the most clicked video on the channel and i don't know why that is It's not the most played, like, duration-wise, but the most clicked by far, by very far. I mean, the next one then is 3,164 3, clicks. Very interesting. Okay. Um... Don't know... If you know if that's possible, can I just like take a look at how much the videos of one specific playlist were watched? Their playlist, maybe. Let's see, strategic command, 15,000 times. Uh, World War II that was against Ranger. Aggressors ancient Rome back in the day, yeah. Unity of Command, maybe I should continue that one. Crusader Kings 2, the first... Oh, um, <laughs> That was the first game I ever ever did a Let's Play on. It's uh, better don't go and watch that one. And then Expeditions Viking, actually. I haven't ever finished it. Maybe I should. And then um, Field of Glory Empires, yeah, that's that's 
pretty good. And Through the Darkest of Times, I love to see that. Cool, cool. So where's the Kriegspiel? <laughs> Where was the Kriegspiel playlist? I mean... Okay, but it only checks how often the the playlist was accessed, not how often the videos in the playlist were ac accessed, right? Mm. Still not what I'm looking for then. Kriegspiel, the playlist has only been accessed 88 times. No, has been started 88 times, accessed 120 times. That is because, well, the playlist as such is only displayed on the, on the, on the channel, right? On the main channel page and not Uh, I don't think I have like the info cards on them. So there's that. All right, waiting for the next report by Peter. Peter the nice guy, um, 20 minutes in, Peter is with Amentus already, or still, I don't know, but I figure they have to roll quite some dice here and down here as well, and I assume there is somewhere another, another squadron of the British. <clears throat> yubidi yubidi. Um, while we are waiting I can also take a look at the website and what I have to do next on that one we need the play page we need the how to play with us page. We need the FAQ page for which I have part of the text already. We want to add a glossary of terms used in Kriegspiel, like mainly like military terms, because we want to try to be as welcoming to everybody and, and lower the barriers for entry for those folks who are not used to military stuff which I think is quite a barrier if people are talking about ordering around brigades and battalions and you don't know what that is. Um, and like, what, what even is an umpire, right? <clears throat> yeah, more contact for the book and map resource pages. That's, that's one of the most important things to do although I will probably not bother doing that for now because I want to set up all the pages first and then from there go on and uh, optimize and then add to what we have so let me take a look on our map do we have new entries on the map yeah actually we have there's someone there. Ah, oh, my case from Toronto. Look at that. Rudolph. <clears throat> That's interesting. Of course, we have a lot of folks from the from the US. 
but that's no no big surprise got at least three from switzerland check sweden a few finland of course we got somebody from south africa from australia from india who's actually playing today with us ready is on our team then we got someone from uh, malaysia or let me see is this malaysia or actually i think it's indonesia and someone who is living in japan i think we also it's they are not on the map yet but i think we have someone living in taiwan so spread around the globe but it's also obvious that we need to find a way to address other other regions as well i mean <clears throat> this is obviously connected to sort of the spread of internet availability and and stuff but i know there are for example growing growing uh, board game war game communities in south america for example and also in africa so we need to find a way or we should we should find a way to address those and make what we are doing here appealing to them like uh, thinking about different uh, settings for our games because obviously with originating in the southern california creature society and having many uh, u.s members um, or members from the u.s i should say there was especially in the beginning much of a focus on american civil war battles and we still have now um, we had those big play-by-text american civil war games going and we have some currently i believe some american war of independence or revolution or whatever you want to call that games going on play by text and of course then we have napoleonics uh, where we play some european battles uh, all the time over the last i don't know half half a year and, and maybe some more but why won't we do I mean, we could do the problem yeah the, the problem we have is maps i was actually researching or looking for maps from historical maps that is from like colombia venezuela uh bolivia this this region there maybe argentina paraguay and stuff to do the southern american wars of independence which i personally find to be very interesting um like the the follow-up so to say or the result of the <clears throat> of the napoleonic wars in europe as like <clears throat> spain being occupied by france led then the colonies to break off and lead their wars of independence after that you know so and then we got these interesting characters like bolivar and, and stuff and sucre and so many many more but yeah especially from a not only from the military history perspective but also from the social history perspective and then and generally speaking from a history of of change and transformation perspective i find this these conflicts to be of high interest although i'm not a, a <laughs> i'm not specialized in them in, in them in any way but i find them very interesting so i would love to play design some <clears throat> some maybe even campaign games there like do the indian campaign or whatever uh and play some battles and then maybe by changing this the focus the scope of what we are doing to be more appealing to players from south america or i don't know do games on, that are set in, in, in africa and probably not some weird horrible colonial bullshit stuff but some interesting battles that would be cool or some some samurai battles like 
set in Japan, you know. There's so much. I mean, history is like an endless, <laughs> an endless pool of, of options you could choose from if you wanted to do historically inspired stuff. As we tend to do mostly in the International Kriegsbühne Society, it's not limited to that. We are also having like Warhammer campaigns going, I think, 40k or whatever. I must say, I'm. That's where I bail out. I'm. You won't get me with that sort of fantasy sci-fi stuff. I think uh, some were also doing a Star Wars game at some point, and there is talks about doing a campaign. Star Wars campaign, which might be interesting. I don't know. Uh, not my favorite setting. I, I I would maybe play in them, but I tend to favor Napoleonics if I can. Maybe I'm also sort of interested in modern, like, I don't know, 80s, 70s, 80s maybe, like Cold War stuff. Um, but haven't really gotten into it that much. Actually, I have still not played Combat Mission Cold War, which I was looking forward to so much. I mean, I have played some of the some of the tutorial missions, of course, but I wanted to play the play-by-email stuff, and I really ne need to get into that. Maybe we do a stream on on it uh, at some point in the future. I really want to want to play that one. And as I have been provided with a key from the publisher, um, I should probably do that. I feel a little bit bad for receiving keys, uh, being gifted keys and then not playing the games, you know. <clears throat> All right, so today is uh, the rambling day as we are waiting for, for, for updates to hear me rambling about stuff. Hope you enjoy it anyways. Damon posted a new screenshot. Damon is like the the crack of Photoshop. He is he is made back in the day the map for Grand Gettysburg, like taking the historical map with the true movement stuff painted in, and he completely removed that, then adjusted the colors, like improvised the map visually highly, and even created a three D model, which we use for Grand Gettysburg. Which, to be fair, you know, there are problems with 3D maps, using them with blocks and stuff, but it was cool anyways. Um, if the elevations are not too extreme, it, it's all right to, to be used, but the work he has put into maps is so amazing. I think he recently... Oh, we are calling the game. Um... He recently did a very huge Lynchburg map, I think. So that'll be interesting now. Let's see. Can we join the umpire table? Sometimes. Uh, and yeah, you can join the you can join the table directly if you want to. It's yeah, it's no. under Sunday Ship Slam. Password is two four six. Okay, so how badly we lose? Hey, that's everyone. Okay. So, what was the name again? Sunday? Sunday Ship Slam. And the password is 246. If you want to get on the table. If you just It'll... type in Sunday, it should be the only one there. Yeah. Yeah, because we're on Saturday, so why would anybody mm -hmm. put... 
Yeah, Why are we calling it the Sunday Ship Slam, or do we just make a little? That that was a, that was an oops when I made the table, and I'd already added so much stuff, getting prep work done that I didn't. <laughs> I at eleven o'clock, I wasn't going to save it, kick back out, come back in to change it to open Saturday. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. What was the password again? Uh, I put two four three, five, two four six. Three four six. Two four six. Even numbers. Okay. All right. Got it. Is there a color left? No. Okay. All right. Marshall, you're doing some work. I'm. I'm. This is a lot better of a situation than I thought we were in. Yeah, I am. Um, I've disgraced myself once more. <laughs> yeah. Now people... you know, what do you mean? Do you... <laughs> People are going to expect things from me now, and yeah. Oh, so, so in a weird turn of events, while we have this entire engagement, all we have all these play, all these admirals commanding all of these ships on a wide open stretch of ocean. What do we end up with? We end up with Marshall versus Jan. <laughs> Oh, once again. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Cease fire. Cease fire. Who is, on blue. <laughs> who is the nemesis of who? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Rivals. Okay. Yeah. So I will do some drawing to show kind of how things progress. All right, so the... Royal Navy fleet started down here in two columns with a screen of frigates. The Spanish fleet started here. Well, oh, I'll change colors. Spanish fleet started over here and started in kind of an odd series of columns. I'm going to make sure I get it right. We had two small Vanguard light squadrons. Yep. Then yeah, three. you basically had two and then kind of kind of like that. You had five separate formations with two with a double vanguard. A couple of other differences is that the British fleet, as was historical, um, had a separate frigate screen. Um, historically, that was at least for part of this kind of multi-day operation that led up to the actual Battle of Cape St. Vincent was uh, under Nelson, Commodore Nelson. Although, at the actual battle, he would have been aboard HMS Captain. Which was his ship. Um, the Spanish fleet... the Span We ended up with uh, getting more Spanish players than losing Spanish players, which we ended up also losing Ninja during the game. So, But they actually stuck with even when they had to move ships around to accommodate different a different player count, they actually wound up with a historical arrangement of frigates shoved into battle line units. They, never, they didn't have a single formation that didn't have a ship, ship of the line in it, which was historical. The Spanish did not have a true frigate screen. They had, they had ships of the line in their frigate screen. So, um, Jan ended up commanding oh. one of those. I hated that so much. As soon as I shot through the first frigate, there was just a ship of the line there, and I'm like, well, it's either I <laughs> yeah. don't shoot that yeah. thing, don't get shot by ten third-rate frigates, or whatever, yeah. third-rate ships. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that was something that was historical in, in fleet battles. If it was a one-on-one, -on -one, the frigate had to contend with the fact that it had bumped into a ship of the line, and if it couldn't get away from it, it was out of luck. But in a fleet battle, there was a there was a general gentleman's agreement that.
that so long as the frigates stayed away from the ships of the line, didn't close with them, and didn't shoot at them, that the frigates would be left alone. Wait, did we call the battle? There's only like one ship that got sunk, from the way I'm looking at it. Um, actually, there's three ships that got oh, struck, those. and there I'm going to get to that. So, ultimately, British fleet, Spanish fleet. Spanish fleet's goal is to reach Cadiz. Secondary goal, given that their purpose for coming out of the Med and to Cadiz was originally to go up here and meet with the French fleet at Brest, secondary goal is to break off and run to Brest. Sorry. That would have been their that was their secondary goal, but they couldn't they could not jump straight to that. They had to make an attempt for Cadiz because Cadiz is their home port. Hmm. Otherwise, they're pretty split up right now. So what we ended up what ended up happening is that the frigate screen, the Royal Navy frigate screen, came up. came up and about here ended up encountering the Spanish line of battle as it was as it was moving across the span one of the Spanish vanguards the Spanish vanguard then turned towards the frigate screen in front of the two columns of Royal Navy ships and the frigate screen was was moving they ended up maneuvering to get out of the way for the most part so the frigate screen ultimately maneuvered like that to get out of the way and i keep running into map edge issues because this is a huge map and tts does not know what to do with itself when it's confronted with a map this big so that's what happened with the frigate with the initial frigate engagement. The British frigates didn't fire on the Spanish on the Spanish ships of the line that were down here. The Spanish left them alone as well, so they just broke off from one another and continued their scouting and vanguard operations. Uh, HMS Victory here, leading her squadron here, which is at the head of this whole column, turned towards the Spanish to close. Uh, Battle of Trafalgar style. And Victory took a good 10 or 15 minutes of just getting punched in the face by the Spanish ships as it clo as it was closing in. Before it, before it finally got to land some hits of its own. But ultimately, Victory caught fire. That's why Victory is over here, because it had to come out of line and deal with its fire issues before it just, you know, experienced some slight turbulence and then exploded. Oh. The... That's not good. Yeah. So, Victory had a fire issue that it had to deal with. The... Meanwhile, Marshall's continuing to sail north. They almost... They had a small issue they had to deal with of the frigate screen being in the way, and they had to all slow down and uh, reduce sail to let the frigates get by. But ultimately, they continued to sail to the north. The Spanish squadrons in the north all were all turning to the north and continued to kind of track with this. Um, Jan had a good inside track, and then the lead frigate in his formation... And again, Jan also respected the gentleman's agreement with frigates. He had frigates, but only a ship of the line was engaging in the firefight. The lead ship in his formation uh, ended up losing a mast. Hence, you can see their sail quality number has been reduced. And that, brought, that kind of brought his formation to a halt as they had to get around the stricken ship which was ultimately forced to surrender by more gunfire from the frigates that were engaging it. The That bought Marshall enough time to get his own squadron 
around Jan and into a close range firefight. And in that in that firefight, given that Jan did not have any ships that could really support him without being torn to shreds, he wound up in a one v four, and that's ultimately while it's showing crippled, he lost another mast this turn. So that's ultimately his ship. His ship would strike. He's down yeah. to he's down to a mizzen mast. Is all he's down to. He doesn't. Well, he well. he's he's unmaneuverable. He couldn't he couldn't make way at this point. He would be stuck there for stuck there for several hours while they cut masts up and tried to re rig some sort of sail arrangement to get him moving. So this ship so this ship would have struck. Had we gone on one more turn, it would have struck on its own. We can rescue you, Jan, if you like dogs. <laughs> you like dogs? <laughs> Now that is in stark contrast. Now the other, so you also had Nick was with the flag, and honestly, the the biggest nastiest ships in the whole battle right here. Uh, they did do a little bit of engaging, but not a whole lot before because because they were trying to make this turn. And I, at some point, not too long ago, Nick had made the decision that okay, we're not going to be able to make Cadiz. And began pulling began pulling everything back to make for the secondary the secondary objective. So everything that's behind these green lines would make it out of the area. They would be able, they would be able to leave and would have to be pursued if they wanted to be run down. But they would actually be able to make it around or make it all the way around and out before they could be run down and caught. Well, did they get that message to the uh, squadron in the self? Uh, the reason this is in gray is I am kind of torn on what Reddy would what Reddy would be doing. Had we continued this battle, his intentions were to continue this firefight, but that would also basically sandwich him in the middle of the of the Royal Navy without being able to get any communications from his flagship nor can he even see his flagship so it would put him in a position that where by the time he realized that he was all alone down here it it may he may be able to break free and make a run for it or it may be too late and he may be pounced on by mul he may wind up with multiple squadrons of ships between him and his chance my money is that it, the strongest possibility is that Reddy makes it to get is. So the Spanish fleet is split. You have one squadron in good in good shape, but one squadron by itself bottled up at Cadiz, and then you have another squad, and then you have the the rest of the bulk of the fleet has gone around to the north and has made has made for the Bay of Biscay, where they would probably run into some more Royal Navy ships all trying to find them. So it's. It's not an out and out. It's not a crushing defeat. It's it is a defeat because the Spanish fleet's been split, and the whole purpose of the Spanish fleet coming out of the Mediterranean was to join with the French fleet to have a fleet strong enough to take out the Royal Navy and break the blockade. However, with the Spanish fleet now split, and this creates with, a third problem. It, yeah, with the Spanish fleet now split, you have a small squadron in Cadiz. But as a general rule, you can bottle up a fleet with a lot less forces than it takes to beat it, because you just need to you just need to keep them tied to their port. So it's a lot easier to put a squadron sailing off of Cadiz and then send the bulk of your fleet elsewhere, because Reddy would need Reddy would Reddy would need some serious superiority to run into the teeth of a blockading force and beat it. So given everything. Definitely going to put this down as a Spanish defeat. I'm not. I'm not certain that this would go down in history as uh, turning John Jervis into the into Lord Saint Vincent. But it's actually pretty close to the historical result. Um, the reason we have some interesting stuff in the South is that Mur Morty made the made the choice to not respect the gentleman's agreement and use his frigates to fire on shipping 
Uh, it helped him out with da with uh, giving some significant damage to Victory. However, ultimately, his flagship was just beaten up on by set what seven capital yeah seven capital ships beat up on his flagship, and then two of them basically slapped one of his one of his frigates and that was the end of that that ship this frigate right here got a double critical hit wait those so, both the both the sunk ones are um spanish right all three or all the three of the ones that, yeah all 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 three ships that struck colors were spanish historically four four spanish ships struck colors and your fourth one would be this one there's there's really no way that a ship that's a ship of the line that's down two masts at almost point blank range with an entire yeah. with an entire line of battle is not going to strike. There's no way they're going to stand and fight. They're going to strike their colors so that before they lose the ability to strike their colors. Wait, is each circle a mast? No, each so the, when I got Damon to make these pieces, we were trying to think of how, there's no obviously uh, regular Kriegspiel pieces these days. We show some NATO symbology on them for infantry, cavalry, things of that nature. There is no sort of symbology for for ships because they just used models. But models are are a little more difficult to track stats for on the fly. So Damon built these blocks for me that have each one of the circles counts as and I'll actually I'll scroll down here to where we have the whole setup. So here we go. This would be the Americans or the French, because both both could be used for blue. I'll be off the So a frigate has one gun deck. It has one circle, one artillery circle. A third raid has two gun decks, two artillery circles. The line between them, kind of just making sure that they're separated. And a first and a first rate has three gun decks. Or what's the brig then? What's the line through it? The line through it, it's kind of in the cavalry sense. Brigs are brig, it, the line through it is both sim symbolizing that it's not got the full firepower of a frigate. It's got less than firepower. His, a brig would be what's called an unrated ship. So you're looking at less than twenty eight guns. Okay. Whereas, gotcha. whereas your average frigate's going to run about thirty about thirty eight guns. So, okay, and obviously the power of the guns is different. The a frigate running thirty six to thirty six to forty guns typically would be running twelve or twelve and and or eighteen pounders. The American super frigates, the Constitutions and and President and Congress, those were running. Those were those were unusual in that they ran twenty four pounders. So the two uh, Spaniards that struck colors down south, um, were they both frigates? No, one's the ship of the line and one is a frigate. A third rate, I imagine? Yep, one was a, this one was a third rate. Okay, so we would have got two frigates and two third rates. Yep, you got two frigates and two third rates and probably gotten four frigates because these two would have to run away. And well, yeah, an entire, not and like they're going to kill them, eh? Well, okay. yeah, but there's an entire frigate squadron right well, that's here. that's me. Yeah, I guess that's about to die. The entire yeah. game, th that's Jan, right? I'm shooting at? That's Jan? Yeah, yeah, that's Jan. What I was doing is I was just, like, circling around so that I constantly had, like, a nice hit on your stern. And just all day I was just pounding, like, directly down center. Which apparently is good. Did I put in a lot of work on that ship? The first one? Got down uh, it. This one is... Your squadron is the one that forced that one to strike. Marshall didn't yeah, force cause, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys Because Mar Marshall, Marshall didn't shoot on it. All right, mm -hmm. so let's go down the numbers. Um, all right, I'll just go down the list as it's here. Armanthus, what did you what did you think? What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, it was my first Age of Sail game. Um, I had marked down some points. The first point I generally was surprised of that I got so little information passed on to um, fleets that were yeah, more at the end of the lines, more to the um, west in this case. Um, I think um, 
I don't know. This is um, it is necessary to rely the information and to not assume that if you got the message from somewhere that other players that are nearby to you also receive this message. So I was the whole time I was not aware that um, Jan was facing three uh, British fleets. I knew there were some uh, British because I heard um, gunfire from the um, east but I did not know the exact number, I did not know um, anything. Um, I think Jan relayed some information back, but it never reached the very back of the uh, fleet. And yeah, generally, I at the very end decided to split up my command, uh, my two uh, flag shift, I put them near to Nick right here to support his efforts and then I sent back my uh, frigates. Um, I told them to keep in max um, singling range to um, build up a cascade of scouting ships that can report the way back to our secondary objective that was here at the port um, Vincennes. Um, yeah. Most of the time it was rather quiet. I had time to think about what are others doing. Um, I feared what was now our, I think, worst decision that is split up to the south, um, that they could not recover, that they could not turn fast enough to join our um, to join us on the way back to Vincent and this is what happened. The South got, got completely split up and um, we were never able to recover from this. I think if we had if we had stayed more compact and uh, the South would not be have would not have been split up, we could have managed to sustain the turn because every fleet would turn, fire and then the next one would come in, turn, fire, and then we could easily go northeast and escape. So, oh, but it was oh. interesting. Thanks for emperoring and had a lot of fun. Yep. All right, Carter. Here we are. Okay. Uh, so, I my impression before seeing the table was that the battle was going a lot worse than it actually is. So, I'm happy that. So far, none of my ships have struck colors and that four of the enemy likely will, plus maybe one or two more that we might get on the retreat. So I think, even though... I don't know what the historic battle of St. Vincent actually said. You said it was four ships struck their colors? Uh, best of my recollection, is four. Okay. Yeah, so even though it was that, and we might not have lived up to maybe the strategic implications that Jarvis might have gotten historically, I think that this is a pretty decent result. Uh, I'll show you... Uh, Tack, if you want to save this, I'd like to show you, show everyone the planning map that we had. Because there were some things that going oh. in, I think, made yeah. our job a lot easier. Once we had established... It's why we took so much longer to plan. I'm a, I'm a, I apologize for that, Spanish players. Um, but, uh, sorry, well, guys, just check the creature fuel memes real quick if you'd like. Please and thank you. Mind if I pull this up, Tech, or is that? Um, I'll I'll, I'll stop I'll stop sharing my screen for a minute, and you can share yours. Oh, I'd have to. All right, then I'll I'll pull up my own tabletop. Um, oh, um, sorry. I was just gonna put it in the, but that's fine. I'll I'll sh I'll share my screen. Um, here we go. So if y'all wanna tune in. Uh, we divided the map into <laughs> sectors and basically gave uh, keyboard points, right, of where in the sector each, you know, we it allowed us to give some pretty cool spotting reports and that kind of thing. We also, I'll post it in general, uh, in order to make the best use of our flags with the limited space we had to type and that kind of thing, we made a little code. Um so I just posted the Google Doc to that in general. So I'll I'll post some example messages, which, uh, you know, 
basically allowed us to get a lot more information in a lot less space. Like, uh, there's one message that I sent. Um, and so that message, if you translate it, that's uh, me to everyone, uh, enemy spotted, uh, four brigs, one third rate in sector D1. So that would be right here. Uh, and then course south, right? So that would be when I spotted the scouting squadron uh, moving south. So that was kind of a interesting way that we managed to convey a lot more information a lot quicker, uh, which was nice. I don't think it was like a deciding difference. I don't think it was like the Spanish for not doing that lost the battle, but it was it was helpful. And our plan was to Trafalgar it. You know, we we wanted to. I, I figured British ships uh, are much more effective close in because we can we'll, we'll pour in weight of fire. We've got usually two or three volleys broadside to the Spanish one. So if we could get close in and just unload into the Spanish ships, it might help with the numbers advantage. And the whole logic with Nelson's Trafalgar strategy anyway was he was outnumbered. And by getting in and amongst the Spanish and French fleet the Spanish couldn't shoot as much. They, they couldn't bring their full weight of numbers to bear. Now, that didn't play out because the it, it the Spanish, of course, one group went north and the other went south. So we ended up sending one of our two battle lines to the north and the other kind of to the south. Uh, but it, almost, it, it, it worked in kind of a similar way, though not with as devastating results. So I'm happy with the way everybody on my team... Uh, handled their ships, their squadrons, uh, and I'd like to thank the Spanish players for a fun battle and the umpires. So thanks, guys. All right. Let's see. Next up will be Chris. Yeah, yeah. I think it went well. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's the first Age of Sail game as well. Um the first message I got, I was like, what does CRS and ESE mean? And I, I literally said that, that wasn't in the brief, so I was really confused by that. But it was funny, but I just, obviously, I just carried on following Carter. Um, then, obviously, I didn't realise that the second line of Spanish ships I engaged were frigates, but I saw them engaging HM, HMS Victory, and I thought, well, they're engaging my flagship, so I told the umpire to unload on them. It was only until the umpire said they'd bitch slapped them and they were, they, they were frigates. I was like, oh. But then I realised they broke the gentle, gentleman's agreement. Um, I think at one point when the first line of Spanish I engaged, I saw breaking away. I think I sent four <laughs> signal messages to Carter, so there's probably people on the ship waving flags around like maniacs um, because I was worried about them. Get, I thought they were going to head to Cadiz. I didn't realise they were going to break round to the left and just carry on engaging. I thought they were just making the high tail sick of this, so that's why I was turning right. Um, overall, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, it's only my second Kriegspiel battle, officially, uh, live play. So, yeah, I want to thank the Spanish players and my fellow teammates and the umpires for a good game. Thanks. Jan, I know you're getting close to your bedtime. Oh, it's it's all good. It's all fine. Um, yeah, also the first Age of Sail Kriegsfield for me, um, I was commander of one of the Vanguard <clears throat> sort of light uh, squadrons. And uh, to answer Amanda's question, I pretty early signaled Red 12, so our code for enemies uh, in front of Cadiz and to the south, because I had at that point eyes on our southern vanguard and uh, ready's column turning to the south and being engaged and in, in front of me two to three squadrons so that was uh, pretty early and then i was just waiting for nick to sort of give the overall command to react to that in, in whatever way um i couldn't really in the position i found myself and i couldn't really make use of the speed of my ships because um Nick pretty pretty much got close up to me, so there was no space behind me. Um, and the way that, and that's mostly to the British, so 
the way the British maneuvered then was to sort of denying me to use the weather gauge, uh, which was well done. Um, I was contemplating to sort of cut in between and sail in the direction of Cadiz to the east and then sort of circle back, like tacking back and get in behind. But uh, yeah, you see the condition of my of my ships anyway, so that was nothing I, I could really do. But yes, I agree um, also with Amentis that like the the move to the south of these the second Vanguard or first Vanguard and, and Reddy's squadron there was probably our main my main issue, yeah. Although it, it I mean I don't blame them, that was sort of part of the plan to probe the either to go directly to Cadiz or probe the southeast and see if there were, were enemies. And apparently there, <laughs> at the point we, we reached the current situation, there were enemies at both positions. So there's that. Very interesting battle. And uh, yeah, communication is completely different, of course. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Lessons learned. Thank you. All right. Marshall? Yeah, um, today will be remembered as the day that uh, I saved the British Empire um, by personally aiming every shot that sank a ship, as well as my wig coming through entirely unscathed. Um, I uh, had orders to kind of, you know, go north, uh, which I did. I was basically in command of the 2nd Division, more or less. So I had my ships plus ninja ships behind me and uh i tried to just kind of stick to orders went north sighted the enemy and um the frigates were really interesting i i honored the gentleman's agreement i did not permit my ships to fire on the frigates however there was a moment where we were turning to the left and i was like you know they could uh, get in my path and block me because what I wanted to do is cross the T of these baddies over here. And um, if they block me to cost me time or prevent me from doing that, I did say if they get in the way, they're breaking that agreement and becoming combatants with us and then we are ordered to sink them. Fortunately, that didn't happen. We did focus fire on Jan's ship. I didn't know it was Jan's ship. Uh, sorry, Jan, um, but, you know, it's how it goes. Yeah. Um, the goal, though, was to kind of cross the T of the big ships, and I figured with the two squadrons we'd hit them. But then when they turned away to the left and they looked like they were committing to that turn, I was really worried that they were going to do this thing where they circle down to the south or something. But they would be in irons, but I would be following them and I'd be in irons too. So my plan was to turn back to the right once uh, I, I finished off here. Turn back to the right and then head down to the south, perhaps, uh, to see what, you know, what I could hit. So I would be momentarily disengaging from the fight to avoid going into irons and then kind of reset the battle uh, coming back in from the north. Uh, and I knew that I had the second squadron in tow. So I figured we were quite formidable. I wasn't afraid of anything. Um, I, I can't believe how I did. I'm sure it was an accident. Uh, but anyway, thank you, everyone, for for uh, the good game. Thank you. Yeah, and that brings up the interesting possibility of if that had happened, then you probably would have spotted us chasing the Spanish towards Cadiz. And that might have opened up some possibilities. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I thought about that too, and, and yeah, that's quite possible because I, I probably would not have pursued them to the east, um, certainly not without any kind of orders, so I would have looked for headquarters and you. I, I was afraid we were going to lose you at one point, and then mm. I was going to have command of the fleet and then all the credit for victory, I'd have to live with all that. Um <laughs> But, you know, I, I figured I, I was strong and I, I could manage. We, we will say that we did break the curse. This is the first time in how long that Marshall has played in an open Saturday and been on the winning team. <laughs> right? <laughs>
<laughs> like I said, I'm sure it's an accident. It's because of me. It's because of me. It's, it's we, we only we, we only had to we only had to start playing a brand new type of Kriegspiel in a brand new setting. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly made for the sea. Yep. All right, uh, Merlin. Hello. Um, yeah. I was towards the wheel of the Spanish fleets. Um, we made some code ahead of time, but not nearly as detailed as what the English had. Which I'm kind of impressed by how detailed they went. I kind of wish we did something like that. But our code was basically, if there was no British in our way, we'd say green and go straight to Cadiz. If there was British more towards the no north, we'd head south with yellow and try to travel along the coast to Cadiz. And if British were completely blocking us, we were to be given code red, which would be to head straight towards Cape St. Trina. Um, I don't think I fired a single shot this whole game. Before I got towards the English lines, I was given code red and immediately did a U-turn and started heading west and started angling towards the north. But any consolation, you actually did fire some shots. One difference between land and sea creeks, Beal, is there's no way you could sit there and individually command every ship or try to send orders to them. So even the ship you're on will just fire on enemies as they bear. So you actually did fire a few shots. But, all right, uh, Nick. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I think most have been said about the Spanish uh, plan and uh, execution. Um, what I can say regarding the the orders or the message, um, well, I didn't receive so much information, just uh, the, the red uh, f message and the 12th message from Jan. So... That's why I, I just convey the the red uh, message to the other uh, squadron uh, because for me it was enough. It means uh, move back to to Saint Vincent, and as per the, the plan we we decided before before the, the battle. Um, it's really interesting. I mean, it's, it's the second time I am playing on uh, 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 um, a naval uh, quick spiel. It's really interesting. It's really another way of uh, of planning and another way of um, fighting. And I hope I will be able to to play another game because I'm sure you you really improve yourself with the time and with experience. So that's all for me. Right and ready. Hey everyone. Uh, at first, uh, I followed more. Uh, Morlin. I forgot his name. Uh, Morte. Uh, Morte. Uh, I followed Morte. We were actually uh, given orders not to head southeast. We were actually given orders to only turn to the uh, to turn only towards the north because of the wind. But when Modi uh, did turn to southeast, I followed him because he would have been on his own if I didn't follow him. So after that, I thought there weren't any troops to the southeast. But suddenly we spotted some troops and Modi started firing. Then I had to also fire to support uh, my enemy, my, my friendly troops. At the time, Modi left the game. It was quite shocking to me because we were in a we were not in a good situation, as Moti's ships were not, uh, well, they they were not a big guns. They were small. Uh, they were only maybe third class ships, and they were up against uh, the triple decked uh, ships. So it was like HMS victory, I think. So uh, we were we were up against HMS victory. Even though four of Morte ships fired against only one ship, that's HMS victory, they didn't do any damage. And it was quite shocking to me, but the game went well. But I didn't receive the uh, red code 
uh, the uh, we had we had quotes right the, uh, the spanish team had uh, quotes but i didn't receive any quotes the only uh, code i received was yellow not red if i would have gone uh, gotten the code i would have already i would have done what other uh, other spanish players have done i would have retreated back to that city if uh, someone has uh, passed me the code i would have done what other players have done All right, and I can explain why you didn't get the code red. It's because you had no, you didn't have enough line of sight to actually see it at the time it was sent. So you were really and truly on your own at that point. Um, but okay. as always, this is this is the first official outing for the Age of Sail Naval Rules for Kriegspiel. Um, I'd like to definitely thank uh, Peter Robbins. He has put a lot of work into working on these and Damon on building the pieces. Uh, I'm playtesting it, running running games with it, and seeing what we can tweak in order to make this, which the purpose of these rules is to take something that has always been very much a grognard thing if you know Age of Sail, if you've studied Age of Sail combat, it's really cool. But it's something that if you don't know it, it's very difficult to perform well. And the goal behind this is to adapt it into a format that requires has a very easy learning curve and requires minimal actual learning from a player in order to understand how the basic rules work, how to actually operate it, kind of in exactly the same way that our other Kriegspiels run, where you don't have to have any experience in order to go out and have a good time. And yeah, those that have experience may know a trick or two, but they're not going to be so far ahead that it's impossible to beat them. So there's going to be some tweaks. Um, I've identified a couple of different spots where for making it smooth. I would really like to thank Peter. He had to dip out. But uh, we started this game with four umpires. We ended this game with two umpires. And we lost two players along the way. And we managed to pull it off to a conclusion. So. Uh, hope, hopefully we will do some other Age of Sail Creek Spiels in the future. It's not going to be an, an every week thing. But it'll be with some regularity. And we'll be, I'll be in the background tweaking these rules, working on them, and getting them to a state that's better for everybody and is something that everybody can actually run. So we can have more people run, the, run these games on the side. All right. If there's awesome. no other questions, I know our European players I think is you missed Rudolph. Too late. I think you missed oh, Rudolph. Yeah, you oh, did. I did miss Rudolph? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rudolph. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, you hate to see. Well, I'm the frigate guy, so I guess, you know, <laughs> kind of makes sense. Um, at first, uh, I don't know if y'all, probably some of y'all were in this game. It was a while ago. You guys remember the uh, the Germans never lost? Eh? We had any the, in that? The CT game? The World War One. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was kind of like this big hunt for these uh, German battleships. I thought it was going to be something like that at first, where it's kind of like we got to find them. But uh, no, we managed to engage pretty quickly. i say the one thing that um, was a bit frustrating was the kind of like mix between third-rate ships of the line and um, the frigates, because uh, there were a few times where just I just couldn't do anything, just because I uh, couldn't fire on anything. Um, well, you but I have. guess, well, not without signing my death warrant, but you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was a super fun game. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to see, uh, and this is something I wanted to try out myself, but I haven't found any good rule sets for it, uh, like some wolf pack type of stuff. Um, I think that would be super cool, like U-Bow type of thing. Um, I wonder what would have happened if uh, the battle in the north kept raging, because I feel like the southern front of the British Navy might have fell soon, especially losing their flagship, or uh, like having it... Was it close to striking colors? Being on fire? No, victory, we... No, we, Vic no it didn't explode. No, yeah, victory... So, to explain, and if you flip these pieces, you can actually see their remaining stats, because that's another reason why we went with blocks instead of stats. Mm -hmm. uh, Victory was nowhere near striking her colors. She just she caught fire, 
but she was nowhere near striking. Actually, if HMS Irresistible wasn't already sailing away from from Reddy's force, it would have struck because it's it's basically in the oh god oh god we're all going to die levels of damage to that ship. Gotcha. Um, so if and you... its crew. Do you think so, that if the battle in the south continued raging without any support from the north, whether it's like Spanish or British reinforcements on either side, just purely a 1v1 with the troops there, that the Spanish would win or the British would win? Ultimately, if Reddy continued to close and Carter's force would continue to... Carter's force would fall in, um, ultimately Irresistible would wind up out of the line, whether striking or just coming out of the line entirely. Uh, striking your colors is not a guaranteed surrender. Striking your colors means I'm done fighting, and whenever this thing's over with, whoever whoever owns the field wins. So a ship that's struck, if you still win the battle, you get it back. It's not like it's it's not like up uh, no take backs. Yeah. So given the situation, you have a first rate that's still in decent shape, another first rate that's in good shape. One, two, three, four first rates all in pretty good shape versus a first rate and four. They would, even with Irresistible pretty much out of the fight, you would still have, they, the British would still have an extra first rate, which is not enough to make it utterly decisive, but is enough that it would have, it would have been a nasty fight. My, my impression of what Reddy would have wound up having to do, whether he wanted to or not, would be making the break for Cadiz. Yeah, it seems like it. He would have had to make the break for Cadiz just to get out of the fight because there it w and that would have been a whether whether they chose to or not situation. In the yeah. north, based on what people have said, um, and we did have some slight map issues in the north because this map is bigger than the table by a good margin. But in the north, you I think you would have seen it with Marshall breaking off to starboard. You would have wound up seeing a situation where if Marshall's breaking off to starboard and then circling around to re-engage, but he's broken off to starboard, that's going to take time. Assuming you're not going to sit there and sell right beside ships of the line indefinitely, you're also going to break to starboard. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, Ninja's force would be rejoining. So again, another break to starboard. With that, just with that breaking off, it, that's just over. What I would see is with with the Spanish continuing to break off, and with no battle kind of continuing. What I what I what I had presumed at kind of battle's end is with the Spanish continuing to break off, your ships would loop around to starboard. But ultimately, you would be going down and taking these two frigates. Because these two frigates, seeing their own fleet sailing away from them, would have the choice of running or surrendering, and they're already under the guns of a whole lot of ships. And while there is that gentleman's agreement, that gentleman's agreement exists only so long as there's a fleet battle. Once the battle's decided, then ships that refuse to strike get shot at until they give up. So yeah. the so these two so the two frigates here the uh, Diana and the one with a really long name. So we'd probably uh, see the capturing the whole squadron. You would probably end up capturing this entire squadron. Yeah. By the time well, no, they... I was I was wondering if if the, so the Spanish chose to sit and fight uh, if the southern battle could have been won but yeah I didn't know we had two uh, first rates down there that's good. Yeah the southern battle the southern battle would have would have remained a would have been a close run deal. Mm -hmm. You have an extra first rate. They have these two frigates, which will survive until they get picked on have by several um, third rates, and then they cease to exist in five minutes. But it would have been a close run deal for the for the Spanish in the south. That was actually a pretty even fight in the north. Given in the north, and this comes down to a question that we always run into in Kriegspiel: you are not playing against the other side's troops. You are playing against the other side's commander. It is all it is it is a game of chicken and you're trying to be the one to make to make the other guy flinch first. And that is and 
in this battle, even though the, the Span even though the Spanish have taken losses, they still outnumber the British. They still outnumber mm. the British by a sizable margin with two entire squadrons, well, divisions of their battle of their main battle line units, including their flagship, that have been basically unengaged the entire battle. It's they they chose they chose to go to, for their alternate objective of getting of preserving the fleet because they felt like they felt like breaking through would be too costly and they made that and they made that decision to go preserve to preserve the fleet were they instead informed of breaking through numbers no neither side was informed okay. of their numbers the british got a very basic information that it was a spanish fleet that's all they knew and then yep. because the spanish it, likewise then or? The Spanish, the Spanish got information that a British frigate had sailed through their lines last night. So oh. the, the British are here, and the British know know that you're here. That's that's basically what sort of information we got historically in the battle. Uh, like I said, um, Nelson was the he was Commodore, and he was actually commanding HMS Captain. But the day before, he had taken HMS Minerve, Minerve, and had gone through the Spanish battle line. Had gone through the Span sailed through the Spanish fleet, trying to get information, and had gotten some. And then HMS Niger gave the gave a bit of forewarning that the Spanish were coming, that they were coming back to Cadiz, and that's all the information that anybody really had. So, one more quick, like, historical question. Sure. Why go for Cadiz if you're just locking yourself up in a port when you could go for the Gibraltar and then... Or could they go for the Gibraltar? Did the British own the southern port at that time? Yeah, yeah, the British had Gibraltar at this point where they were about to capture. It's right in there. Okay, it's so right you in couldn't there where... touch Gibraltar then. You couldn't go Yeah, the well, and historically, the Spanish were coming out of the Med. They were coming out of the Med, and their oh. ultimate goal... <laughs> What what caused this battle to happen in the first place was the Spanish fleet, and it's already on the steam of a map of the map. But the Spanish fleet was coming out of the Mediterranean, and they were going they were they were going to Cadiz to get their fleet out of the Med and to orchestrate a link up with the French fleet. They couldn't sail. They knew if they sailed their fleet out of Cadiz, out of the Med, past Cadiz, past around the Cape, around Portugal, which was a British ally, and around and through the Bay of Biscay, they were going to get caught and dealt with before the French could link up with them. So the ultimate goal was just like what actually happened at Trafalgar, where the French and Spanish fleets linked up off Trafalgar, in that area, that was the goal: was for the Spanish fleet to come out, and then the Spanish and French fleet, fleets to link up. At which point, they felt they had the superiority to take on the Royal Navy. So, I feel like Cadiz is a weird goal. Like, couldn't you just bottle them up at the port? It's there. It's there. Yeah, but it's their only port on the Atlantic, on the Southern Atlantic. It's their only port that can handle a fleet. So, in the traditional battle, they were coming out of Gibraltar and then yep. getting engaged with the British. They were coming out. Of in the traditional battle, actually, this is similar to the setup of the traditional battle. They were coming out of Gibraltar. They got caught by what's by what they call what's called a Levanter, which is a very strong east wind coming off the Med, and that took them way out to sea. That took them way out to sea, and basically they spent the next week coming back in to get. By the time they got free of the storm, they so didn't they were have. Meant to be out there then. They were trying to go for Cadiz, but they just got pushed way out. Yeah, they got put. They were trying to make just this short hook to Cadiz, where they would be able to, they'd be in the harbor before the Royal Navy had a chance to react. And okay. then, so they're they're being expected at Cadiz. The wind took them all the way out, and we're pre-radio. The only way that they would be able to communicate would be by getting back there. So the the fleet's orders were to go to Cadiz. Wouldn't it be then, better to stay inside the Mediterranean and link up there? Or was the French Navy no, the, stationed no, in the, the ports? The Royal Navy was sitting was sitting off Gibraltar. The Royal well, Navy was 
sitting off Gibraltar waiting for that. They knew they would try to link up, so they're waiting for that attempt to link up. Oh, uh, and the French Navy was all up north then. And yeah. the French Navy, the main French fleet was at Brest. Gotcha. So you you wind up in a situation where you're trying to get two fleets in two different, te- technically meds to sea, but two different oceans together so that they can build a fleet big enough to deal with the one that's that's sitting between them. Yeah, that makes sense. Then. All right, fair enough. Yeah, I was wondering why they st- like came out of Gibraltar but then ended up on the other side of the ocean. Yeah. yeah, in a modern context, you wouldn't have this battle because your ideal scenario is to have your fleet on either side of the enemy fleet where you can, because you, but that's only because you can communicate with them. But in this time period, you would want your fleet concentrated so that you could actually communicate. What uh, year did this take place in? 1797. Ah, uh, gotcha, sweet. You might have got the uh, rule sets for this. Uh, I will once, once I, once I, once me and Peter get through tweaking it. We're still, gotcha. we're still kind of working on making tweaks. I don't really want to release it as a rule set yet because it's, it's very untested and there's a lot more tweaks to do. But I okay. appreciate it. I know we've got a bunch of people who it's getting close to their bedtime, and I've got to figure out what I'm going to cook for supper. Well, thank you for umpiring. Yeah, thanks a yeah, lot. Thank, yeah, thank, exactly. everybody, thank everybody for humoring me. Thank yeah, thanks. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Tech, if you have any time after... All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the stream today. Almost, yeah, six hours in uh, with one, almost one and a half hour at the beginning when nothing happened. And at least one hour in the end here with uh, debriefing discussion and then we will continue... Of course, although it appears that a lot of people are dropping already, but those that are still there will will discuss, I guess. All right, thanks a lot. See you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed this. Good night.